Hi everyone, and welcome to Comics from the Multiverse, the DC Comics podcast from the Mail Fuzz Network. I am Peter, and joining me as always is Matt. What's up, hoosers? And returning from his sick leave from last week, the ginger... Actually, hold on, let me rephrase that introduction, sorry. Because I learned a new phrase the past week from a new show from Fox oh, called, called Son of Zorn, and there was a phrase in it that I want to use now on this show every time I introduce Connor, so... I'm going to do it again. So, always with me is Matt. Hey, what's up, boozers? Bring on the ginger! Connor's here. <laughs> Wasn't it just ginge? You're right, it was just ginge. I do apologise. But it's close enough, right? I'll finesse it next week. I'll finesse it ginge next week. Ginge sounds like the next step from mange. <laughs> like, oh, I got a bad case of ginge. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, and also this week, we have a guest. We have Tim Vergulish. Mm-hmm. Hello, thank you for having me. Now, you're probably wondering who Tim is. Tim, of course, does no, the... No, they know who I am. <laughs> well, just just in case, <laughs> on some off chance that they don't, I'm going to explain it. Uh, Tim okay. is my uh, co-host on our horror movie show that we do in the Mailed Fuzz Movies channel on YouTube mm-hmm. called Screams After Midnight. We talk about horror movies. Uh, Tim himself is also a up-and-coming comic book writer. <laughs> Tim, why don't you tell them about your comic book, Goatman, and why they should care about Goatman? Uh, well, it's it's just a fun little uh, romp uh, about a uh, a goat man. If you're familiar with the urban legend of goat man from uh, the Beltsville, Maryland area, uh, it's kind of a take on that. And um, yeah, I've been self-publishing comics for about three or four years now. And uh, my latest one, uh, Veterinary Clinic, uh, should actually be coming out soon. Uh, I the, had a Kickstarter for it uh, that finished. Uh, last month and uh, we actually just sent it to the printer yesterday so hopefully should be uh, you know bearing any problems or anything uh, should be getting that out pretty soon which is cool in fact you might even remember if you've been listening to this show or watching the show since the start the first like three episodes i think we promoted that kickstarter quite a bit yeah. so yeah, yeah you guys did that's a uh, very nice of you thank you very much i appreciate that a lot you're welcome, Tim. It's always a pleasure to help out, Tim. He's also <laughs> a uh, up-and-coming stand-up comedian. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Which, which, <laughs> which I'm going to point out, just in case he cracks a really awkward joke later. It's just yeah. it's intentional. It's, it's his thing. Like, this, this, is, this was a time oh, wait, that used amateur. <laughs> yeah. so wait the awkwardness is on purpose i thought that was just tim being tim this is uh yeah this this feels way too weird with pete being too nice we need to yeah. get back into our normal roles where we all just hate each other all right well we're going to talk about comic books uh dc comic books specifically because that's what we're doing this show uh and this was a big week like super big week there's a total of 14 books that we are going to be talking about over the course of this show a fortnight of comics. Now, I did not read all of these. <laughs> I think the only one who read all of them was Connor. Yeah. What, what am I doing? Because Connor's got you know, Connor's corner at the end, of course. Yeah, you have an out. Like, you can be like, hey, guys, I'm not reading this anymore. I know, but... You did, no, no, this is your fault. You were running late. If we were here <laughs> on time and everyone was waiting to go and I was like, oh, I've just got to read Red Hood... It was like, ah, oh, forget it. Everyone's here. No, to go. you I'll kept saying up. you're going to read Red Hood until the team came together. Don't put this yeah. on me. Which tu- which has turned into the first arc. So he's committed till issue six. Yes. I'm saying it right now. He's committed till issue six. Maybe 12, knowing the author who must not be named. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to be satisfied until he's read enough to fill an omnibus, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting out of control. <laughs> Again, you did it to yourself. In fact, I feel like at this point, I'm not allowed to drop anything ever. No, you're not. No, you're uh, allowed to, except for Red Hood. Like that's you're committed. All right, so I'm going to tell you what's coming up in the show then. So the books we're going to be talking about today are Detective Comics 940, All Star Batman issue two, Action Comics 963, Wonder Woman issue six, The Flash issue six, Green Lanterns issue six. Uh, which of course was delayed from last week when it was meant to come out, but we're getting caught up this week. Um, Batgirl and the Birds of Prey issue 2, Superwoman issue 2, New Superman issue 3, Suicide Squad issue 2, Deathstroke issue 2, then we're going to jump into Connor's Corner for Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Court issue 4, Red Hood and the Outlaws issue 2, and then a little bit new, new, little new thing at the end, 
we've got a little DC Young Animal section where we're going to be discussing the issue one of Doom Patrol, which is the first book from that sort of uh, subline from DC. Which we're going to at least check out all the number ones in that line. Uh, whether or not we continue them, I mean, we're going to be a lot more lax with that because you know we're really here to talk about the main DC line stuff. Yeah, it's not for everybody. That's a sneak peek into what Matt thinks of it. Um, <laughs> so that's all the books that are coming up. We'll get to them pretty quickly. No, but be- is, is there a reason why you say nine four zero instead of nine forty? I think it's a habit he has where the others like what what was a. Uh... Action. So that's what the computing process Nine six three. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> but instead of nine forty, he he just does nine four zero. When it goes to three digits, I like to say it the, the three digits because it, it makes it really clear what the number is. I don't know. It's just a habit. It's just it's my own person. My own personal thing, Tim. My God, okay. he, we're five minutes into this show with him, and he's already <laughs> messing with things. I, Tim, I, was just I need to go get a it. euro. We need to get the show on the road. <laughs> Well, I think uh, uh, myself and a lot of fans were wondering, so I'm just, <laughs> it, I think it's, it had to be said. I'm sorry. All right, okay. Uh, uh, right. Be brought up. Before we get to the books, though, there's just a couple of quick bits of news that we should cover. One's very quick. James Tenney in the fourth has signed an exclusive contract with DC. He's going to be sticking Shocker. around. It's yeah, exactly. It's has it he makes ever complete sense. Written anything for Marvel? Not for Marvel. He has a uh, a creator owned called The Woods, which I'm interested in checking out now. They're usually still allowed to create their own stuff anyway. Yeah, so... so I, it's a I few don't think creator own stuff, but... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I don't think he's worked for the other company. Okay, so. well, that's just them making sure that he won't. Um, and given that he's doing a knockout job on Detective, and we'll be getting to well, that very soon. And he's come a sense. long way from being Snyder's, like, student. Like, that's how they met, is he mm, was one of yeah. Snyder's writing students. Yeah. That's how so, he got started at DC, wasn't he? He was doing the, yeah, the backups. Yeah. Doing the backups, yeah. and he did Talon, which no one liked. Well, I don't speak for everyone, but it I don't was, think anyone it, here was. I read the it. first six, and it wasn't that good. It's so forgettable. I, I thought it was okay, but like just mm-hmm. yeah, end of the day, it's just nothing special. Yeah. Cool. All right, so that was the first quick thing. Um, James Tenney in the fourth is now an exclusive at DC. The other thing is that the the monthly results, the sales results for August are out. Um, not the full chart because they always wait a couple of weeks before we get the full, you know, top two hundred, and we can see how many DC books were in the top fifty and that kind of thing. But we got the top ten, and we got the market shares. Uh, we also got the the great headlines that apparently this August was the the twenty year high for August. This is like yeah. this is like really successful. We're having a really good year. Yeah. Apparently, it's been on an upward trend uh, year on year for the last few years, just in general. The co- the comics, the direct market's actually getting stronger as we go. Um, and DC, as kind of expected, uh, once again uh, took shares, and they actually took a bigger share than they did last month. Uh, from the retail share, which is the uh, the money made, they had thirty nine point two seven percent. Um, compared to Marvel's thirty point seven eight, and of course the rest they'll make up the other uh, odds and ends. Yes, Matt, I thought you had something to say. I was say, say that's because of uh, Marvel constantly delaying their <laughs> issues. So doesn't help, does it? Yeah. Can't no, tell. it's not out. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then on the unit market share, which is the number of books sold, uh, DC actually have forty four point five nine percent of the books sold in the month of August. So. Oh, Lord. It's a, which I believe is a, a full 20% up from where they were in April or May. So since Rebirth has started, they've went up 20% of the market share. That's actually really, so, really good. And I wonder what the... Do you have the numbers for like what the Star Wars market share is? Uh, no, they don't put that separately, I'm afraid. <laughs> gotcha. Because I remember when they first came out, we talked about like they'd have enough of the market share to be its own third brand. Mm. You know, So I'm wondering how much of that is propping up Marvel... Um, because just I know from going into my shop, people are reading less Marvel. At least the people I talk to there, yeah. uh, and they're reading more DC. So, no, yeah, yeah, which is good as a DC fan, but you know, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's funny actually because Marvel announced a book, a, a, a crossover event this week, which is a uh, Monsters Unleashed or something like that. Something, oh yeah, something along those lines. Like a Scooby Doo project. I don't. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily like a crossover thing. I think it's more of a like mini series, just about kind of like the old Marvel monsters. Okay. I think they're playing it as an event, aren't they? Yeah, there is some tie-ins. They, they said there was tie-ins. Oh, uh, maybe I, I don't know too much uh, about it, but they I they did make it seem like bigger at first. But... Mm-hmm. What's that? 
And so if I could get some Werewolf by Night and Tomb of Dracula... You talking about cool. uh, Jack Russell, the Werewolf by Night? Hell yeah. Uh, best named comic book characters ever. <laughs> All right, uh, so just to wrap this up, I, I do have the top 10 books sold in the month of August, and I'm sure you're curious. Um, number nope. one, <laughs> un- unfortunately, is Harley Quinn issue one. <laughs> <laughs> You people. Um, hey, I have no regrets. No, admittedly, that one is cheap. <laughs> I'm blaming not... you and James, Connor. Yeah. <laughs> We're buying all of them. It's all your yeah. fault. Uh, although, no, the real fault, the reason why this is really at number one, though, I mean, don't get me wrong, issue two is still in the top ten, so it still did quite well anyway, but issue one had a ridiculous number of variants, which I'm sure helped prop it up to number one here. But uh, So, Harley Quinn issue one is number one. Number two was All Star Batman issue one, which makes complete sense. A Batman issue yep. one, uh, doing well. Who'd have thought that? Uh, number three is Suicide Squad. Uh, Suicide Squad issue one. Uh, number That's f- tough to say, isn't it? <laughs> Not really. I'm just. I'm, my brain's fried here, Matt. Come on. Uh, number four is the single um, non DC book of the top ten, and that is Amazing Spider-Man issue sixteen, which ap- oh. apparently was the start of a, a big new storyline. I think, which is why it's. Uh, so high. Uh, number five is Suicide Squad Rebirth issue one. Number six is Batman issue four. Number seven is Batman issue five. Number eight is Justice League issue two. Number nine is Harley Quinn issue two. And number ten is Supergirl Rebirth issue one. I'm happy Supergirl made it on the top ten. Yeah. That pleases yeah. me. I'll tell you what's interesting about the, the Harley Quinn at number one. Obviously... It's because there's so many variants, but DC have this whole they can return them right mm-hmm. at the minute. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder how much of that is unsold stock and how much actually got sold. Yeah, because Suicide Squad and Harley Quinn, those are both major releases around mm-hmm. the Suicide Squad movie. The same week. I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm wondering if the shops just ordered a butt ton of them. Yeah, that's possible. Also, yeah. I I could be wrong, but I think with Harley Quinn, uh, I think it was one of those books that. Um, stores could do like the you know those store exclusive variants which they did, yeah yeah there was a yeah, lot so of those. They, yeah you have to order a lot to get those so that probably uh helped it a lot yeah but to be fair it was a good seller even before rebirth so yeah no, no, yeah but wrong. not not top five seller right yeah like, not not beaten batman no. uh seller <laughs> like to top it so no. That said, I'm sure I'm sure you know the movie coming out and then Suicide Squad and Harley Quinn both hitting on and- Harley Quinn at least yeah. was the same week. I think Suicide Squad as well. It was, and uh, yeah. obviously that that couldn't have hurt, you know, mm-hmm. in terms of what the stores were ordering, in terms of how many people were actually buying them. I'm sure that was all boosted from that. So, yeah. um, but there you go. That's that's the uh, couple of tidbits and news that I wanted to throw in there before we get to books. But without further ado. And full warning, there will be Stephanie Browns for each book as we discuss them. <laughs> That's uh, spoilers for people who aren't uh, getting my joke. Um, so, there you go. So that the joke fir- was so bad, Tim had to take a drink. Because <laughs> the final we, professors, there's yeah. whiskey in that cup. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a bad joke, that was a quality joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a quality joke. All right. First book we're going to talk uh, about. Going. First book we're going to talk about is Detective Comics 940, uh, written by James Tenney IV, art by Eddie Barrows, and this was the end of the first arc for Detective Comics, and oh boy, uh, what an issue. I hate comics that make me tear up. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> if, if the, I, was, I don't hate I have... the quality, I hate that they make me feel emotions for paper. Now, uh, to be fair with this, though, I think it was, like, the fastest I've ever gone from being, like, devastated to being, like, yep. oh, thank God. <laughs> yep. Yeah, there was obviously there was a lot going on in here. Uh, obviously, the last issue ended with Tim being like, okay, I've reprogrammed all these drones to come and attack me. And that was a big cliffhanger we left off on. This week, the drones come for him. He seems to survive a round of them. But in the meantime, like, Batman's trying to get to him. He's trying to you know, gather the troops, everyone's trying to get there, and they're all talking to him on the comms, you know, and Tim says to Batman, you know, thank all the other guys for everything, thank you, Bruce, you know, really heartfelt goodbye. Uh, Steph calls him, and he's like, I love you, Stephanie, and she's like, no, don't hang up. And we get that splash page, that glorious splash page of Tim just being obliterated by a horde of bullets. Um, which is, you know... It's rough. Rough. Um, but as, as much as I was getting a little like heartfelt and teary-eyed 
up in the build up to that with all the goodbyes. It was a scene with Stephanie and Batman afterwards that yeah. truly that did it. Me. That, yeah. that broke it. Like Bane to Batman's back. That was it. <laughs> because no, yeah, there's some good there's a couple of pages of reactions before that of like you know, like uh, you see Cass looking, you see Clayface looking kinda sad and you know yeah. the Cassandra uh, Kane one, that's that was Eddie Barrows at his best. Because that's a silent character. And he put mm. her was it a, a like a quarter panel? It was pretty big but not huge. And you just felt the body language throughout yeah, yeah. that. Like, so well done. Yeah, it was great. Um, so the scene with Steph and Batman, though. So Batman goes to see Steph, and he's just sort of went to comfort her and, like, you know, tell her that, you know, this, this is what Tim does. And t- Tim knew this life. He picked this life. And that's when Steph hits him with the uh, the acceptance letter to the college that yeah. Tim was going to go to. He was going to leave yeah. and go off and do this. And, like, Batman drops the letter, and it's like, you he's, he's, he get that sense of, he realizes that Tim is going to get out of this life. That Tim is going to go and yep. do other things with his life. Because even though he was good at this, <laughs> what the hell was that? For a second, I thought that was Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, so yeah, but so even though like he was good at this life, like he was he was destined to go and do other things. Like he he could contribute to the world in a different way, and he was going to go do that. And like Batman dropping the letter, and we get this awkward moment. But then we get the fantastic, like both of them turn round, and there's that great panel before the splash page where you actually see them hug, where their hands are just like reaching for each other. Yeah. And it's just a really, really sweet moment. Um, there was a, a small tinge of worry after the Killing Joke movie that something else was about to happen, but otherwise <laughs> <Yeah>. we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. Uh, no, really emotional. And and it legal. Before we get to the end, and I don't want to talk about the ending yet, we'll save the last few pages for uh, the end. Uh, also, Batwoman beats the crap out of her father and yeah. arrests him. <laughs> Kay did not come out looking so well. Yeah, she takes him out of custody because he's like, oh yeah, the ship's about to teleport. Uh, if you want to get off, now's the time. He's like, yeah, not alone. <laughs> and she just like dives at him through the window. Yeah. Bingham. No, really good. Really, really good. Really, really strong. There's almost not a lot to talk about in that first chunk because it's pretty straightforward, well, but just of, really emotional. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, and it was really the ticking clock of them trying to get to Tim. Yeah. And yeah. then Ulysses being like, well, there's no stopping it. Like, he did this to himself. This is what he gets. Mm-hmm. And Batman's like, don't you ever say that. You know, there's got to be a way. Yeah, there's so, always a way. That's Batman's mantra. There's always a way. Yep. So that was really, really well yeah. done. So, yeah. and as you said, the art did a really good job of getting the facial expressions and the uh, the body language down, like throughout. Yep. Yeah. So, but I was until the reveal, you know, like Tim uh, foreshadowed, you know, that, that things aren't what they seem. Yeah. I was like, how many Robins are we gonna go through? Because <laughs> Grayson died for all yeah. intents and purposes, right? Mm-hmm. And then Tim and Damien's died. <laughs> And, Jason and the time, other one, yeah, he died, and like it's the most famous. So I was just like, man, track record <laughs> on Robins is not good. No. Yeah, but yeah, we're getting to a point where Batman's going to have to be held accountable for the amount of kids he's uh, got well, killed. I just remember like when I used to read Wizard, they had they would do like made up like covers, and it was like Batman in the Batcave with all these different Robin suits in Memorial. <laughs> Talking to a new kid, and it was like, I want you to be the Robin. <laughs> just oh, like, and actually, that was like 15, 16 years ago. You forgot, you forgot Stephanie Brown. Yeah, but is that still continuity in this? Because well, it seems like she's well. just a spoiler. Yeah, probably. Like she has a it's still, girl. Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> it still technically just, happened at some point. Yeah. yeah. I'm saying in canon. I don't, I don't c- think. I don't care what they say. She was Batgirl. I don't care what they say. That happened. Of course, but like I, I see her more as Batgirl than as Robin in this. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. All right, so let's get to the the juicy part. Let's get to the the after the heartfelt you know hug between Batman and spoiler. We turn and Robin or Tim. I should say Tim. I should specify. <laughs> he's not even Robin. He's yeah. Red Robin now. But he's somewhere else. He's like, where am I? What's going on? And then we see the staff. We see the staff from yeah. Doctor Oz. It's a shadow. Yeah. Yeah. We we can know exactly who it is. And this Mr. was Mr. Oz, not Doctor Oz. Doctor Oz is a completely different a hole. Uh, Mr. Oz, <laughs> sorry. Um, but <laughs> but Mr. Oz, like right away, I'm like, oh crap, 
Like, they're, they're doing this. Because I had no idea they were going to turn this into a connection with the overall yep. Rebirth storyline. They would be seen play out more in action comics with uh, Mr. Yeah. Oz. So, yep. right away, I'm yeah. like, oh, crap. He's already got Doomsday. Now he has Tim. And my inst- my next thought is, who else does he have? Like, yeah. or, or who's next? Is or who's next? Yeah. Who's next? Because we also know Ray Palmer's missing. Right? All right. We got that in Rebirth. Yeah, the Atom could be uh, here. And, and the whole thing was it looked like he shrank Tim down, not teleported him. Mm. So the, the way that he reappears and stuff. So I thought that was a pretty interesting tidbit. I uh, noticed because, that. <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's how I took it. I could be completely wrong. I but could see t- it as that. Yeah. So because he has to sell the point that, that Tim was dead. Mm. You know, yeah. because he even kind of says that. Like now... That was part one in, in unraveling this. And yeah, because well, he says that uh, as far as everyone else is concerned, you're dead, right? You're yeah. here, they don't know you're here, they think you're dead. Um, yep. And I guess because there's so many bullets, they can buy the fact that there's no body because it, yeah. you know, it'd be mush, it it'd, be, it'd, it'd be a paste on the floor. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I, 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 guess, I guess how that works. But um, the real interesting points here, though, is why Mr. Oz has brought him here. Because Mr. Oz says that you were starting to reconnect threads that you you shouldn't be reconnecting. And he says something about him being like, you know, th- this important thing in everyone's lives. And all I'm thinking is, all right, so by being with Stephanie and like rekindling all that stuff, was that going to lead to memories? Was like stuff going to start to come back from the previous timeline that they're not supposed to remember? Although the thing that adds into this though is, does Mr. Oz not want them to remember? Because it seemed like when he spoke to yeah. Superman before, it felt like he was against Manhattan. Here's Whereas, something yeah. I think you've just slightly missed here. When you said um, reconnecting threads that shouldn't be reconnected, mm-hmm. he doesn't say should. He said that could not be reconnected. Yeah. Implying yeah. that... Tim's an outlier. Yeah. Well, I didn't miss it. I just... No, but you said... I think That's there's right. a difference between should and yeah. could. Because should is something yeah. that he doesn't want him to do but could not do is something that physically couldn't happen. No, I just didn't remember right. how it was phrased exactly. I was paraphrasing. So let's just look at this in the grand scheme of, of now it's a connected universe where in the new 52, everything felt so compartmentalized. Like, yeah, there were tie-ins, but everything fit in its box. And like Batman continued on kind of by itself and always kind of seemed disconnected. So when this started, it felt normal to me that Batman's by itself <laughs> while in action we're getting a lot of these hints with Superman and even in Flash and Titans we're getting these hints. So to tie in Batman, it really shows them going, no, this is a bigger, like, I don't want to say conspiracy, mm-hmm. but like a bigger plan than than just those heroes. It's going to tie everybody in. Yeah, and it's, it's worth noting as well as, as Tim like screams at him, I was trained by the world's greatest detective. They're going to yeah. come for me. You know, like, mm. you know, that idea that Batman will figure this out. And we know that Batman, yeah. he doesn't know that he has Tim, but we know Batman's on the case, you know, the whole... Because you know, of the comedian button. Yeah, the, yeah, the button and the working with Flash to try and solve this stuff out. So we know he's on that trail. He doesn't know it's leading to Tim, but he'll get there. Mm-hmm. You know. That's um, going to be one hell of a moment. It yeah. is. It is. Well, I'm ex- I'm expecting an event in the summer next year. Uh, somewhat, yeah. One... Go ahead, Tim. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, that's the one thing I was kind of wondering is, like, um, I really like this kind of intrigue of all the Watchmen stuff and, um, you know, Mr. Oz, which, is, is it, he's supposed to be Ozymandias from We're just Watchmen, guessing. We or... don't know. It's kind okay. of what yeah. the assumption is. We but... are speculating that he is, but we don't know for sure. Okay, which, uh, when you look at... Watchmen, Ozymandias is kind of the unspoken hero, yeah. right? And Manhattan is kind of the villain because he's this mm. all-powerful god being that just kind of does what he pleases. Yeah. Uh, so that that all fits. If it's not that, it's a hell of a redirect, and I give them credit for yeah. the breadcrumbs. So, yeah, so uh, I, I'm, I'm really liking this stuff, and I, I feel it's very intriguing. I'm just wondering how long uh, it's going to be drawn out. Um, I feel If it is like an event next summer, uh, I feel like it's a pretty good time frame, but I, I hope it's not something that's like, you know, we just get strung along, and it's like, you know, two, three years from now or something, you finally well, get some type of answer. But The whole thing will likely be two years, because they said when they planned yeah. all this, they had a two-year plan. So okay. I would, I would likely that. expect that there'll be, you know, some stuff that isn't complete for 
until two years, and then it'll lead into whatever yeah. they're going to do next. But, um, yeah. but no. So anyway, anything else? What anyone wants to throw in about Detective before we move on? I have oh. literally a single complaint with the entire book, and I, I loved it. I have one complaint that's not mm-hmm. even in the pages. It's it's the cover. So they took Tim off the cover after it was originally solicited, and now it's just completely off balance and it looks wrong. Yeah. I just don't like it because now I look at it and it just, <laughs> it just looks it just looks <laughs> off. Okay. Um... Yeah, but when that's my complaint, it's a pretty good so, issue. So, so this and last week's was it last week's Superman? Mm-hmm. Like these are so far in the short rebirth period, two of the best books that have come out all year. So, yeah. like keep keep on it. Yeah. Like, if yeah. I can get one of these. Every other week, like please. Yeah, they're, they're doing great right now. These these two books have been phenomenal. So no, that was that was a fantastic issue. Yeah. Um, this was actually one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, catch up on Rebirth because I, I just um I, I read a few stuff when it first got announced, but um, just kind of due to money constraints and stuff, I um, I don't I'm not able to read as much stuff um, weekly as usual. But I've been hearing so much good uh, things, not just from you guys, uh, but uh, from other podcasts and stuff about Detective and everything about it, like sounds really right up my alley. Like uh, I love Tim. I love that kind of connected Bat family from like you know kind of like '90s, early 2000s DC, and um, it just it has that really cool nostalgic vibe for that era. And this is you know without a doubt the standout uh, book of all of Rebirth uh, for me. It's it's so good. Um, and yeah, and this issue was kind of like the, you know, the ultimate <laughs> of all the ones so far. Well, I, I think I, I think a big thing with Detective for people who are longtime fans of a lot of these characters is it's finally making a lot of characters who were just basically forgotten during New Fifty Two feel important again. Uh, yeah. Tim here feels yeah. really important. Stephanie's having scenes with Batman, which never happened before. You know, during but did, did it ever happen in New Fifty Two? Maybe in Eternal, yeah. but I never read Eternal. Well, so yeah, because that's where they that, introduced that... her because everyone threw such a fit that. They erased her. She she wasn't yeah. even uh, she didn't have much interaction with Batman in uh, yeah. Eternal. She was more like kind of this she like off to the side. Stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, if they interacted, it was pretty minimal. Yeah. So that'll take us on to All Star Batman issue two, written by Scott Snyder, art by John Romita Jr., and then Declan Shelby on the backup. Now. This was an issue that falls on from the last one, and most of it takes place on a sort of top of a train. Uh, Batman's fighting uh, King Killer Shark Croc. and Killer Croc, Killer and Croc. Uh, who's the third one? Amygdala, who I've never even heard of, but kudos yeah. to Scott I've heard, Snyder. Yeah, I've heard of him, but yeah, he's he's like not known enough that I remembered his name. It's like yeah. you know, like like um, <laughs> way even beyond like D list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. I like how it was like Z list. I like how yeah. it was like three big things, like you know, like the really big chunky characters. I like that there was three of them at the same time. Oh, and yeah. they each, they each brought back up for some reason. So Croc brought King Shark, and King Shark yeah. brought Amygdala, which is like, all right, whatever, cool. It kind of yeah. feels like uh, Russian dolls. It's like, how long is yeah. this gonna go on? Yeah, and but then yeah, in reverse though, like, and then because they just get yeah. bigger. And then once he deals with them, Copperhead shows up, and like there's all, all sorts of stuff. Cheshire. Happening. But it's some red, to see Cheshire. Some rednecks. Yeah. You know, I loved all this stuff. All the action on the train and then off the off the bridge and in the, the truck, you know, with the the, the mm-hmm. corrupt guards or whatever who are like saying, Oh, this is how Two Face's coin works and he flips it for him and Two Face doesn't take too kindly to it and shoots him <laughs> instead. He's like, Oh, is that how my coin works? Is, yeah, and that's why it's moments like that that made me like this issue a lot more than the first. Because I felt like Snyder hit the stride of character. Instead of like forcing Two Face into this thing, he hit um, moments that felt right. Because you don't flip his coin; he flips his coin. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, I, I'm agreeing that it was generally a better issue. We also got the introduction of uh, KG Beast. Yeah. Um, no, I was cool. Was for that. Yeah, I was cool for that. I like how they built him up with uh, Penguin and. Uh, black mask and uh, great white like you know going to Hiram I, I, I like first... that I was kind of annoyed that is is he just calling himself the beast now yeah well, that, 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 kinda, 
No, yeah, like I feel like comic books are one of those like rare things where you can still kind of embrace the sometimes the silliness of it. Like, you know, I understand, you know, when you make changes like that for movies or something to make it like a little more realistic or stuff. But like with this, it's like, no, like just embrace the you know, like dumbness uh, of the I, name, you know? I, I don't disagree. I, I think the thinking behind it is probably that the KGB don't really you know exist yeah. anymore. It, it's not <laughs> as yeah, prevalent. KGB as waits for no one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I like how they built him up, though. I like how they and he like talk, spoke about mess and like he's there, he's standing there, taking it. It was almost like the scene in a uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, where Winter Soldier's yeah. standing in front of the car and you know he's about to take it out, you know. Yeah, and that was my main problem. It felt like it came from elsewhere, you know. Um, I was fine but... with that. My, my I have two problems with the issue, and mm-hmm. there's two fairly major ones. One is that I think the dialogue, and it was the same as the first issue. I think is getting extremely convoluted and like bulky like it doesn't flow that yep. well for me at all uh, yeah i don't agree with that at all well i had to go back and reread stuff like when they were talking about the difference in two-face i like that wrinkle like two-face works on multiple levels and that because it's a split personality dent does stuff to sabotage uh two-face and two-face does stuff to sabotage dent yeah i like that too and that's great yeah. And when we get to the point to where he's super cartoony, that's Dent working halfway in between. Like, yeah, we're going to have these big, huge things, but that's because he wants to get caught. Yeah, but I, and I so agree. there's a kid's version of Two-Face, there was, right? There was, moment, there was like certain speech bubbles that I had to reread because I didn't really yep. understand what and they just said. And that's what I was getting to. That bubble that explains that, I had to read like four times. Because the punctuation, the way it fits into the bubble, like Snyder's known to be super wordy, and that's always been one of my faults with him. But here it takes it to the next level. Yeah, I think it's definitely where... gotten worse because I never used to have a problem. Seeing his early, yeah. like, New 52 Batman, I never had an issue. Mm-hmm. But it feels yeah. like as it's went on, and especially with this, it feels like he's gotten really wordy with things, and it's yeah. it, it's becoming more of a chore to read the dialogue. The... I, I really didn't have this problem at all. I, I never had to reread a, any bubbles or anything just oh, aren't you special ginger yeah. no i just I, I didn't notice any sort of problem i thought it flowed pretty pretty nicely for me i think mean, the well, also i didn't there's a lot of have... it, me wrong but i still thought it i was in a different headspace i didn't want to have to read it because this was a book i was set on dropping after this issue but i'm going to keep going because i want to know where I, it's headed i think the action flows really well i think that's where the, the book flows incredibly well is the the action and the pace of that but the the dialogue for me is really really dragging it down a little bit for me right now. The other problem I had was for the second issue in a row, the the ending cliffhanger. Now we didn't address the first cliffhanger by the way. The cliffhanger from the first issue at all. Where Alfred yeah. is the one who sabotaged the bat plane uh, or yeah. the bat wing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, is not addressed, which fair enough, we'll get to that at some point, whatever. I've been watching Mr. Robot, I'm, I'm used to cliffhangers not being dealt with for like four episodes, it's, you know, I'm used to it now. But, the, but for the second issue in a row, the cliffhanger at the end kind of bothered me, because in this issue, they had these bookend scenes that are set like two days in the future, where Jim Gordon and Billick are driving out to Wayne Manor. Yep. Because... Reasons we're not quite sure that they're, they're sort of like they're keeping it from us exactly what's going on, but you get the sense that they've got reason to be out there. And then at the end of the issue, you see them. They're actually inside. They've come in with a warrant, and they've forced their way past Alfred, and they've went to the uh, the clock where you know the the old fashioned entrance to the cave. Yep. You know, and he sets the time, and he walks yeah. through it, yeah. and he's about to go in. Like the issue ends with like Gordon's reaction, his face as he like if there's the clock moves out of the way, and he sees what's behind it. Um. It's my... actually where the Waynes are interred. <laughs> my problem with this, much like the cliffhanger from last issue, is that I know it can't just be the obvious thing. Like, there has to be a swerve to it. And I feel like we keep teasing these things that are going to change the fabric of Batman, that are going to completely alter the what Batman is. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> Stop it. Well, and again, it goes back to this was supposed to be a Dick Grayson story before he made it into All-Star Batman. It was supposed to be the follow-up. Oh, is that true? Yeah. To yeah. black, yeah, it's supposed to be the follow-up oh. to the black glove or black hand. Black mirror. Black mirror. Black mirror. Good yeah. lord, there's Got... too many black figures. In... <laughs> Got me on the end, Matt. Sorry. That's it. But um, the black mirror. Yeah. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah, I, I just... didn't know that. 
I feel like the, if this is Dick Grayson going through this with Two Face, mm -hmm. and uh, Alfred sabotaging the Batplane, and then Bach and and Gordon going to Wayne Manor, because what I liked is that Two Face's ultimate plan is he's still a lawyer, right? He's still a district attorney, and there's all these threads that you can compile that Bruce Wayne is Batman or that even Dick Grayson was Batman, <clears throat> but you never have the proof because he cleans up after himself. So yeah, well. that's what Alfred was saying, um, and that scene the, with the uh, Duke. Yeah. He was saying that, uh, like, it's actually not that hard to maybe guess that Bruce Wayne's Batman, yeah. but it's actually like finding the proof that connects the dots. And so this is what the two days in the future teases is like. Somehow the Gotham police end up with the proof. Probably. So that's then. how they get the warrant. You'd imagine they end up with enough to yeah to. Yeah. You know, have it as a suspicion. But my problem with but, this, though, is see if yeah. it was just Gordon, right? If it was just mm -hmm. Gordon, I could buy that maybe you're going to make a bit of a status quo shift and we'll go into yep. a new era where Gordon knows who he is, right? Yep. I almost mm -hmm. want that to happen at some point because I think it'd be a, quite an interesting thing to explore since it's been, you know, yeah. it's been how many years of Gordon not knowing? Well, and they also I, mentioned that, that Harvey knew that Bruce is Batman, which I think, I don't think I've ever known that. Uh, Harvey Dent, you mean? I thought, oh, uh, yeah, 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 I thought yeah. you meant Harvey Bullock. I'm like, what? Meant, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that threw me for a second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, so sorry. Harvey Two Face or Harvey Dent. Yeah. Because there's that flashback scene to where Bruce brings that up. Hmm. And he says that was always his worry because they were friends first. That this would, you know, which I don't. It's kind of a mess. Like to bring up the KG Beast and his love for messes. It's kind of a mess with that. And I'm sure Snyder, he's talented enough to get himself out of it, but it feels completely unnecessary to yeah. do all these... I think it's interesting you hit upon this being a Dick Grayson story originally. And I don't know how much of it was changed, you know, yeah. since then, because obviously this was like six, seven years ago now, and, yeah. you know, he's probably changed details, especially since it's a different character. Of course. But, like, yeah, this story would make more sense to me if it was a Dick Grayson story. And I, I'm almost... Well, and there's no let's let's say that that Dent puts out there that Bruce Wayne was Batman, and they kick down the door of Wayne Manor. Well, at that point, Bruce Wayne was gone; he had died in storyline, or he was missing, and Batman was dead. Yeah, I think my other problem is, as I said, I would I wouldn't mind so much if it was just Gordon, because I could buy that Gordon might find out and then keep it under wraps because you know of their history, of their respect for each other, of whatever. Right. Right, but it's not. It's him and Bullock, and it looks like there's a you know a squad of cops behind them as there's well. At least two other cops yeah. that we see. So it's it's not like it's just going to be contained. It's going to, so it has to be something other than what we, the obvious thing is. You know, it has to be a swerve of some kind. And the other yeah. problem I have on top of that is that I feel like this is one of these things that they always tease, and it happened not that long ago with Superman in the New Fifty Two, where Lois outed Su Superman as Clark. You know, I feel like it's one of these things that always keeps coming back up. It's either that they're going to die or they're going to have their identity revealed. And they the always dance is, around these. I can always see it as a, as an interesting story. If they do follow through with this, and have his identity out there, then you've got is is he still scary to the criminals when they know who he is? Is is he still that fear machine essentially? See, I think you can always get rid of every uh, dual identity except for Batman because it's oh. at the end of the day, Bruce Wayne is the cover. And Batman's the real person. I think... And when you get rid of that public persona, I think you do a disservice to the character. Even forgetting that, I, I think... I just don't think there's a chance in hell it'll ever stick. I, I don't think yeah. there's even a possibility no. that we're going to a status quo where everyone knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. I, I think we could do it temporarily. I mean, we just did it with Superman. It's the same thing, like you say, it, it wouldn't stick. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I, I do. I, I, wouldn't, I, I, think, I, I, I think it's meaningless. Too, because look at, look at in the other company, you have Daredevil who's had his identity released like five or six times. Sure. And then we have another writer come in and undo it somehow. You sure, know? but I just, I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind seeing the story explored <laughs> and then go back. That, that that wouldn't be an issue for me personally. It would be for oh. me because I'll just feel cheap yeah. when they retcon it somehow. I, I feel like it doesn't work for everyone. Uh, like, I, I think Daredevil is like a rare exception where it actually made for a really interesting uh, amount of stories for a really long time. Well, uh, it wasn't until recently that they just kind of yeah. retconned it. But like, well, yeah, when yeah, Mark, Batman, when, I, I can't on, Tim, really When see. Mark Wade's uh, Daredevil run started, he had fun with it, and he had like him wearing like a shirt yeah. saying, I'm not Daredevil. I'm, and that was well, pretty funny. 
Well, yeah, because it was, again, it was down to the proof, and that's what I liked that Snyder setting up. Yeah. And the story is probably going to be that, that whatever proof that Dent sent isn't going to be concrete enough, like, because Batman does clean up after himself that well. But I, th- so, I, I, I honestly think I've got a problem if he gets it to the point where Gordon and the police force have all had that have all been told this fact, but it's just not quite proven. Because then they've all got it in their heads. Like, you know, and I think that's I, a problem. No, I've I've always thought that like I know they've never outright said it, but I always had the feeling that Gordon did kinda know. Like yeah. I always thought mm. it was just kind of an unspoken thing that they they had. Like <laughs> um they kind of have that in this issue, though. Like Alfred says, it's not hard to connect the dots. All the cops have probably yeah. had this cross their mind at some point or another. It's well, probably always there as a suspicion. The ones that have dealt mm. with Batman enough, I would say, like Gordon, because he talks to them like they Bullock, meet. You know, all yeah, the ones that we actually even Montoya. Know. Yeah, um, like the the scene I always think of is uh, I think it was during No Man's Land, like. Uh, Bruce unmasks to Gordon, but he's like turned around and he's just kind of like, yeah, I remember that. Does you know he's kind of like, I don't, I don't care. And like I always thought that was kind of just him being like, kind of, you know, like, hey, I, I already know. Let's not like, yeah, you know, make it official. Let's just kind of, yeah, the way I know for like, sure. Yeah. Where to me, Gordon doesn't care because Batman's done so good. Yeah, that's true too. Well, you know I mean, what I mean? I, like, I don't even think it's a case of Batman's done so good. I think he doesn't want to know because he knows Batman. He sees Batman as who he is. Right. You know, it's like if you go watch Dark Knight Rises and he has that conversation with uh, uh, John, he's like, um, I know exactly who saved us back then. It was the Batman. Like, right. that's right. all he needs to know because that's who he is. Um, so. I'll but tell yeah. you what kind of bugged me about the uh, cliffhanger is uh, <laughs> I, I didn't realize that the next page was starting the backup story. So I yeah. thought that's what the cops were looking at at first. <laughs> me yeah. too. Like, wait, that would be confusing. We should briefly talk about the backup there, I suppose, shouldn't we? Um, so, Duke is having meetings with his uh, crazy, deranged mother, who's still messed up from uh, everything that went down. Joker. At the end of, Joker yeah, stuff, yeah. All that stuff. And they go out to try and research one of the, the victims slash survivors, because they're tracking Zaz, because, you know, obviously what everything he did in the last issue of the backup. And... Uh, they have a bit of a conversation, and then Zaz shows up and uh, slashes Duke, giving us a cliffhanger. Any thoughts that anyone wants to bring up? Duke's no, because enough. I'd rather have it be Harper Row, personally. <laughs> yeah. but, I, I, I like Duke, and I like, uh, I've been enjoying this backup. You know, there's not a ton to it yet, but I, I kind of like everything involved in it. Um, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Shelby's artwork. And, it's all right. Uh, I... I feel like I, I like the Zaz stuff, and I like the idea of this color wheel of the training, but I yeah. do think in this issue they mentioned it too much. Yeah, like it was a little, du- yeah. during the main story when Duke like rides off, and Alfred's like, "But you're only just started the wheel," <laughs> and I'm like, "Ah, eh, I feel a bit forced." <laughs> like, uh, yeah. that's fair enough. So you say he went off on a lark. <laughs> Oh, that was terrible. All right, let's let's move on. But I, I think to sum up, um, I'm enjoying All Star Batman, but it's definitely got its issues. It's definitely my yeah. least favorite of the three like main Bat books. Yeah, this. I, uh, I I feel like this issue could have been really bumped up if it had more chainsaw. I feel like we didn't get enough chainsaw <laughs> from the first one. If they would have kept yeah. it up, I I could have I I can look at a chainsaw wielding Batman. For... Basically, you just want the Gotham Chainsaw Massacre with Batman trying yeah. to stop Leatherface. I was, I was thinking more like a uh, Evil Dead. I, I knew Batman. All right, okay. All right sorry, yeah. sorry, okay. <laughs> evil Dead, but Batman. Do you yeah. imagine Batman saying Ruby? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he would say Martha instead. Martha. <laughs> 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 All right, let's move on to Action Comics 963, written by Dan Jurgens, art by Patrick Zutcher. And this was a change of pace because the, obviously the arc ended last issue. The mm-hmm. first one, Path of Path to Doom. Uh, this starts the new arc, which, by the way, I laid it in the new arc. So they're putting them on the cover. The uh, that yeah. it's a start of a new arc at the top. I like that. It's a nice touch. Yep. Um, but this uh, follows our mystery Clark Kent, who says he's Clark Kent, seems to believe that he's Clark Kent, and doesn't think he's Superman, and uh, it follows him doing one of his cases. But it keeps like flashing back to like because uh, he the main part, the main present day stuff. He's like running through this building from security. Yeah. 
and we sort of fill in why he's there as the issue goes on and mm -hmm. uh, we see him get sh almost get shot at a press conference because someone tries to prove that he's Superman by shooting him <laughs> it's a little extreme <laughs> it's a little bit extreme oh. but it makes sense yeah. well, <laughs> if, if you're if you're so fully believing that he is yeah. Superman you're, you're yeah. in your mind you're not doing any damage yeah yeah, yeah he's course. gonna <laughs> feel like such a jerk though if he's wrong yeah, no, he's going to be lying or dying. He's like, well, but I thought I was Superman. Well, oh, dear. And, and the, the special crimes unit was there. You know, yes, uh, so, Maggie Sawyer, who appears twice yeah. this week across two issues. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, do you guys have any theories who this Clark Kent guy the f is? Uh, f <laughs> I walk. have no idea. <laughs> okay, I feel so like they haven't read... given us enough to go on. Yeah, I read enough of, of New 52 Superman that they are completely <laughs> retconning that arc. Yeah. In there, because the what what Clark Kent was doing before he had it outed had nothing to do with this company, uh, Geneticon. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't know if this was something so, I, I missed from a previous story or yeah. if it's just okay. Nah, no, he like was Genericon he was getting into this massive conspiracy that somehow ended with Vandal Savage, and it was a mess. And there were some high points, but there was a lot of low points also throughout there. Um, was that so the like, glad... thing where that like thing was possessing people? Yes. Like okay. Yeah. So which I was always the the bag on pack was the single arcs were fine. It's when they try to tie everything in is yeah. when it became a big mess. Yeah, I and... think I read the majority of pack stuff, which I I, I feel like the I liked a lot of like the character stuff, but then some of the overall story stuff, which feels like maybe is probably editorially. Yeah, yeah, uh, he had a couple of good standalone stories. He had the uh, the the Horrorville one, or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, I liked a lot. Was it, was it called yeah. Horrorville? Well, and most, yeah, yeah, Horrorville, because it was Smallville, but they had the you yeah, know, and the one like the Elder Things haunting the, Metropolis. Yeah, and the one, the one the one with the aliens underground as well was quite good. Like that was its own standalone. That was right arc. near the start, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah that, that was, was, yeah, that was his that first was, arc. That was before Doomed. Yes, yeah. and then Horrorville was after Doomed. So yeah. all of that took over Superman, and he got outed, and there was the Ulysses thing, and that paid off. And so none of that had to do with this. So I'm glad that Jurgens is taking time to go back and retcon, the, and just the, streamline it. Other possibility is that it isn't a retcon. This is a completely different Clark Kent, and we weren't ever following this Clark Kent in Superman. But that means there was two Clark Kents running around, and I think that would have been pretty apparent. Like, oh, well, like kind of or, or he way. has implanted memories, and he wasn't there at the time. He just well, thinks. I'm he just was. saying that the the place that he is investigating is a genetic research place, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that could lead to Did something. Know... Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's my just my main point was I took this as Jurgens going through, and and cleaning up and tidying up Superman, because it's almost like a smart Bizarro or something. Oh, maybe, uh, maybe. I mean... Just like one with actual normal intelligence. But he passes the lie detector test, which means he believes. And by the way, I liked the little touch so. that Batman was the one like giving that test. Oh, yeah. for well, I looked, Superman. even before I turned the page. I go, that's Batman. <laughs> that dude looks way too much like like Bruce Wayne with a mullet to uh, not be Batman. But no, I just I like this whole thing that's like, you know, old Superman's got Batman yep. to do this because he doesn't trust them. Uh, yeah. Which is obviously what the whole issue builds up to because Clark gets in trouble and Superman comes and bails him out and says, look, we need to talk and that's your cliffhanger. Um, it wasn't an amazing issue, but I thought it was a nice change of pace because the last six issues have all been like big fight and big action and this slowed things down a bit let us explore one of the mysteries and, you know, good. I think it's a nice change of pace. I really like that it wasn't so action heavy. I mean, I get that's the name of the comic, but it felt refreshing to have a break because yeah. I feel like it, it, at six issues, it's time to get a little bit burned out on it. Yeah. But having just something else really helps. I think my favourite moment of this issue might have been a... When it cuts to like our Clark and Lois watching him on the news, and Lois is like, "Well, he's got that." Uh, what was the word she uses? That sorry, it was like fumbling. Yeah, it was like, like fumbling. Uh, yeah, it was a word like uh, that. She got that fumbling thing you do down down. Uh, it's a, a befuddled look. Befuddled. That befuddled. was it. Yeah, it's befuddled. I like that. And then and even uh, John's like, "Wow, he looks just and he looks like you and sounds like you, Dad." <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting enough, and it is a nice change of pace. Because if you have just breakneck action, 
after time after time. Yeah. It's going to get boring because yeah. it's just the same. I think uh, that's I Go ahead, uh, I'm just gonna say I was just gonna say like I definitely am intrigued by the like mystery and stuff like I want to see where it's going so it, it's definitely uh, did a good job of like hooking me into the uh, yeah. story. Yeah, no, I I I agree. Um, and action's kind of one of those things where it's it's the nice baseline for rebirth for me where yep. it's probably the weakest book that I still really like if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not the the, the mm-hmm. threshold book. Yeah, it's not the weakest book I'm reading, but it's the weakest book I still really like. I, like, I don't know yeah, how to it's say the it like one that, that like, marks yeah. the signifier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just like having decent Superman. <laughs> well, obviously, you do. Know. So, like, I'll take it. If it's baseline, that, that reminds I was going to say that too. Matt, how are you finding Batman Day? <laughs> <laughs> What's now? That's a good point. We happen to be recording this on, I think it's the third huh? annual Batman Day. In case you guys can't see the shirt that I'm wearing, I wore it specifically. <clears throat> um... It's not uh, showing up super well, but that's okay for copyright reasons. It's a Superman so. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyways, uh, yeah, I, I don't like this day mainly because the filthy casuals. Um, <laughs> the filthy casuals. I'm happy all for out. all you. I'm, yeah, I'm happy for all you Batman guys. I just wish more people cared about Superman mm-hmm. half as much as they cared about Batman. I, I tell you, see so. some like uh, Cleveland place say that. They should have a Superman Day on June first. Yeah. I tell you, I tell you, you I tell you what. Even if they don't, we'll have a Superman Day on the show. Yeah. Right. It's cool. Just to make is that the... that. I just, I've come to terms. I used to be angry about it. Now I just realize if, if you're angry, you're giving them power. So I just don't go anywhere and lock myself in my fortress of solitude. I mean, if it means you know some good deals on uh, some comics or something. Yeah. Well, cool I bought the Killing Joke on this day last year. Yeah. So, well, that, to just be honest, that's basically what it is. It's an excuse to have a Batman sale every year. That's yeah. what it is. Oh, to be yeah. fair, they gave away a, a free copy of the the first issue of King's Run. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's good. It, it, yeah, it's it's you can get it on well, Comicsology for free, and obviously in I think, shops. But yeah, most stores have it, and, yeah. and a lot of stores are doing like uh some sales and fun stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. but. I'm just going to take solace in the fact that we have a good Supergirl book, Action Comics, Superman, and then Super all the Woman. other. Yeah, Superwoman, the new Superman. Yeah. We'll, like, we'll, they're all we'll baseline good, so yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take solace in that. They're all good to great, I've, which is great. And I know it, it's a little thing, but uh, it's so rare in these days, day, in this day and age to see uh such a highly numbered book and i don't know i just i really like looking at like action yeah. and detective and seeing those triple digits and knowing That's there's nice. like a really yeah. long-standing legacy right. especially well, especially when marvel yeah. can barely get to double digits with most books now <laughs> yeah yeah because I, I, mean... I don't go ahead tim well... Oh no! Just saying, like I, uh, like I, I'm a, I like Marvel a lot. I'm a, a big fan, but that's yeah. one thing they do that irks me. Like I really wish they would just let, you know, books last long. I wish I had a, a flashing red like alert thing to flash over Tim's face right now. Just to, <laughs> like, <laughs> one of them is a mine. Well, no. What? <laughs> well, no, it's it's true though because like Invincible Iron Man's rebooting at sixteen, and like, yeah. Yo, we almost got to 20, guys. Joe, Joe's like, funny. Gonna... Joe's funny. See, when I read hard hardcovers, right, and I really like collecting hardcovers, and I loved omnibuses, Marvel's what made the omnibus for comic books a thing, right? And yeah, now yeah. none of their runs are long enough to get an omnibus. Yeah. No, but you put multiple runs together, so, like, when they do yeah. Aaron's Thor, Bollocks. it's going to be God of Thunder, Thor, Mighty Thor, back to God of, like... Yeah. That's what annoys me most. If, yeah. if it's, like, a new creative team coming on, sure changing number i don't mind too much at least i understand it it's yeah. when it's the exact same team like writer and artist nothing yeah. changed and they're like yeah. well you know why not and, let's have and, a new number one or astonishing like ant-man the... which didn't even change its name yeah, <laughs> yeah no no that Marvel one did, did it, the same thing. i think i think ant-man did because it, um, it was it was oh. hawkeye that didn't it was all oh, new no. hawkeye uh, hawkeye did it as well but uh oh yeah, no, you're right yeah it was all new hawkeye all new hawkeye oh. had like four issues and then went back yeah. to number one in the same year, so you can't even differentiate them by year like you normally I know. do. Nope. It's, uh, it's a nightmare. Nope. But and that's what I like about DC is that they picked right back off where this is where the numbering would have been, you know. Right. Well, uh, three books out of fourteen. Let's keep going. <laughs> um, <laughs> next up, we have Wonder Woman issue six, uh, written by Greg Rucka and art by Nicholas Scott. This is the third chapter 
in the year one story. In fact, one little thing that I didn't put in the news, but I'll mention here because it's related to this book, is that the next issue that would have been the fourth chapter of year one will now be a standalone origin issue for a character that's... Uh, well, she was in the, the present day story, but this is the first time she's yeah. been in the, the past story. And that's uh, Cheetah. Yep, Barbara oh, Ann. Nice. Barbara Ann, yeah. Uh, uh, I guess, is that just for Nicholas Scott to get ahead? Yeah. Yeah. I imagine, I imagine so. Yeah, we're going to have a different artist, but I can't remember who it was. But cause I don't have the story in front of me. But I remember it being. I remember they had a page, and it was all oh, that looks nice. So I think we're in good yeah. hands. Uh, and so. I think that's good. And they knew enough about it in advance to put that at the end of this issue. That the yeah. next one's going to be which a is, break from the year one story. Which is so. cool because it's also set around this bit of the timeline, and it's yeah. related because it's like the villains, you know, origin. Well, I've never been more interested in Cheetah. Like Cheetah's always been a villain that's just kind of there, like. They'll do the Injustice Gang, and she'll be there as the Wonder Woman representative. The only, the only time I've really liked her is in the uh, the Justice book. You know, the 12 yeah. issue Alex yeah. Ross art with, uh, I think it was Jim Kruger who wrote it. Um, she was done really well in that. That book did quite a few villains really well, actually, that I don't typically Cause like. It, well, because you got the time spotlight on them, you know, and yeah. they just weren't thrown there. But, like, the way they introduce her here in her class, like, talking about how this... this boulder fell on her leg and so she has to walk with a cane and i just i thought that's fun little character stuff that ruck is doing to build yeah, i i thought our introduction was great i actually i think this is my favorite of the year one issues so far yeah. um i loved yeah. everything with wonder woman like getting her photo taken and put in a cell and because mm-hmm. she speaks a different language there was a lot of fun there with them not understanding each other yep. and it's all relying on facial expressions to see how isolated she feels you know and it was done really well. It all, it also it did a great job of explaining, to an extent, how she gets all of her powers. Like it makes it clear she didn't have all these already. She didn't just have these because she's from Themyscira. She gets yeah. these from the gods, her strength and her flight and stuff. I love that yeah, so much. Such a gorgeous page as well when they all show up uh, in yeah. their animal forms. Yeah, and, well, and, a- and you get that seeded throughout too, because when the the hawk is following her, and then you see a dove. And an owl, and you're just like, if you know anything about mythology and Greek mythology, yeah, it's like these little things that are there that yeah. are representative of the gods. And that that obviously leads to a cliffhanger where she has a super strength, and that sets up the next issue. But yep. what I like about again about Barbara Ann coming in, mm-hmm. and they bring her in to translate because she knows enough of these different languages that she may be able to couple yep. it together. Because the the translator they have only speaks like ancient Greek, and that's not technically what she's speaking. She's speaking, and he is. Yeah, yeah, well, she's speaking like an amalgam of, of old languages, but because they're not stuck in a time thing, they've been updated. So the, the Themyscirian language has evolved just like any other one. Mm, so yeah. there's Latin base to it. There's, um, what did they say? It's just like uh, how English has like parts, you know, Latin yeah. parts, uh, whatever else. And, and so, so Barbara Ann's able to come in and, and piece this together enough to translate for for Diana. But and what I like I, about that, that though, was clever. is that it builds their connection. It sets this idea up that like this is the first person Wonder Woman in this world feels that she can talk to. So it sets up that friendship in a really nice and way. And it happens to be an educated woman, which is a nice touch. Like it's not it's not Etta Candy, you know. Like she's not like a a, a military linguist, you know, that does it. It's a scholar that comes in. I thought that was cool. Uh, especially after the old dude just was not having it because, oh no, it's 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 ancient Greek. I can I can do it. And even Diana mentions like the, he's speaking like words I kind of understand, but they, he's doing the, like they're really old. So yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah, no, I thought they did a good job of building up some of the Wonder Woman mythology for people who don't know what it is, and introducing that relationship with Cheetah. So I actually think that's a really good issue. I really like this one. And yeah, I think the gorgeous. the language barrier was pretty, the best part. Because it really let Nicholas Scott shine of having to do yep. all of the storytelling for both parts, and it led to one of my favorite moments is when uh, when um, she comes in, she speaks the language, and her face just lights up, and she's like, yep. "Oh, someone else can speak to me." It's fantastic. So. Does this make you feel better, Connor, that we're not getting black magic right now? I mean, it helps. Okay. But it, it's still a little hole inside me just waiting for, for that to come back. Well, that's Actually. fine. You can just sit it next to that big dark hole where your heart's meant to be, you ginger. <laughs> we have ho- we have hearts, just not souls. <laughs> okay. Apologies. <laughs> They're different things. So do you guys have heart lights? I could, like, E.T. bond with you? 
No. Uh, okay. No, they, they, they come with a soul. Uh, are you are you liking Wonder Woman, Tammy? Hmm? Um, oh, you've not been reading that. Been reading oh, it. Yeah. No. I... Um, yeah, I should say. Um, yeah, just uh, you know, due to time and, and money constraints, you know, I, I'm not reading everything. But this one, I kind of chose not to read just because. It's Rucka, it's Wonder Woman. I know it's going to be amazing, so I'm so kind of just... Trades. Yeah. yeah, so Hard when it comes out of trade, I'll get it. Um, I did just finish reading the um, new volume of the uh, Rucka Wonder Woman trade that just came out a, you know, like a month run. or two ago. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I had read most of the run before and like the old crappy trades they had, but just rereading it, it's, it's fantastic. And it made me really excited for this, but I... I'm looking forward to catching it. I had it. forgotten you hadn't read it, but I'm glad I asked because it, you didn't tell everyone you hadn't read it, so it actually worked well, out. I just wish Tim had would have made up a plot point and not Mr. B. <laughs> hey, he's you not know? like you. He doesn't try to lie and fake his way through Aquaman, <laughs> all right? He's not like you, Matt. Well, I also, uh, now that we're past All-Star, I didn't read the backup to that either. You didn't notice, so. Oh, <laughs> you, you. Too busy oh. reading Marvel stuff. You cheeky, <laughs> no. cheeky scoundrel. <laughs> I have not read any Marvel in like two weeks, so oh it's strictly. I, have, I haven't even read my Star to... Wars in about three weeks. Yeah. That's okay. You don't I have Star Wars. Just... Well, I dropped uh, one of those books just because I got behind. Anyways, um, no, I, I wasn't because I didn't want to read the All Star backup. I just have too much. So okay, no, I I get it. Honestly, if we weren't, I mean, I'd probably read it for that book. But in the past, there has been comic books where I'll get to yeah. the if it's got a backup. If I don't really like the look of the backup, I'll just get the backup because time. Usually, um, the creative team can be pretty. Yeah. Uh, like like with this, I, I feel like it's fitting because you know it's the same writer and you know it's it's a good artist. So like I yeah, I think it's a uh, worth a read. But sometimes you know they just throw stuff in there just to up the, the page, page count, charge yeah. a little yep. more. Exactly. All right, so let's move on to. Uh, the Flash, issue 6, uh, written by Joshua Williamson, and welcoming back Carmine D. Gia Domenico um, on art, which was great because I have missed Shouldn't him. have been for a better issue, yeah. A welcome return, for sure. Um, now, on the one hand, the thing that happened in this issue, the big reveal, was exactly what we'd been saying the reveal was probably going to be since like, issue yep. 2, or probably even before that, but you know, like I remember I was saying it way back at the start. Um... Mm-hmm. At the same time, though, I have no complaints because it was done flawlessly. That page where August turns into Godspeed and says, "I am Godspeed." That big splash page, beautiful. Yeah. I'm, I'm in. I'm fine. I'd and rather it have makes something sense. that makes sense than a twist yeah. for the sake of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't I see l- it. Well, okay, I didn't ahead, see it like as uh, I didn't predict it as early as you guys, but I, like definitely in this issue, I, I at some point like I saw it like coming like. Oh yeah, there's a good chance that's it was uh, who's gonna be. But I think know, it sometimes was, it doesn't have to be surprising to be good, though. Yeah, I, I think Tim, it was the end of like, issue two or three mm-hmm. when the when Godspeed like attacked like a group of people at the labs, uh, okay. and it was no one seen him though. But it was like August who told us about it. Yep, I think uh, that was yeah, the moment where we all that. went. I bet yeah. it's him. Like you well, know, and that's the thing. That's what the well-told story is. It's stuff seated there that you can pick up on. Yeah, unless it's meant to be one of those mysteries where it's like, oh no, double turn. But yeah. here, it's been there from the start. It matches his motivation. And also, it makes sense why he didn't have a code name. You and know? It, it also makes sense that he... Like, Godspeed was typically only going after, at least from my memory, criminals, homeless people. He wasn't going after people who he thought were worthwhile members of society. If that yeah. makes sense. Um, so, Speeds no. does not count in. Yeah. Because he went oh. after the speedsters as well. I mean, even the speedsters, was he not mainly going after... The criminals. Oh, he was just going after well, the. No, he was the because he's absorbing their the speed. Yeah, yeah but true, last yeah. issue he kind of showed up and attacked Mina and the other. Oh, true. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Like all the true, people yeah. that are at that research. I was just, I was, I was thinking of the homeless guy he attacks at the start of the issue. Because well, yeah, because it's because one of the things he says who it is. when when he's when he's talking about everything when he's like revealing himself as who he is he mentions it's all these worthless people he's going after. So I was connecting the dots with that in my head I think, but mm. you're right. He has attacked people that weren't. Yeah. I think yeah. it's just because he thinks that by taking their speed, he can do better yeah. I guess, for helping, yeah. for getting rid of the other stuff. This is We've seen so many speedster villains in the past, whether it's Professor Zoom or Hunter Zolom and Zoom uh, mm-hmm. during John's run. This one's different enough to stand out, and I like that. 
Yeah, and, yeah, he, he's, and he looks different. He's got a different motivation. He's not there yeah. to be the rival to the Flash. He just will yeah. be by happenstance because he has the yeah. opposite. He, he if essentially wants to be better than the Flash. Yeah. Now, I, I have a question for you guys. Um, mm-hmm. Is because uh, I haven't read like all the Flash stuff from uh, you mm-hmm. know previous New Fifty Two and everything, but is there like a Professor Zoom in this uh, like universe now? Or uh, well, uh, there's gonna have to be if they're keeping Flash canon Cause, because he's yeah. from the future. So maybe he hasn't shown up in a while, but just he's the- there. And the only reason why uh, I, I was kind of wondering is because I'm like, oh, are you really going to have, like, you know, if uh, Godspeed becomes, like, you know, a new kind of, like, you know, big, uh, you know, uh, member of the rogue, you know, Flash's rogues mm-hmm. and stuff, like, are they going to really have, like, you know, if there's also Professor Zoom, who's, like, another speedster that also knows, like, Barry's identity and stuff, like, are they going to have, like, two, well, like, speedster villains that... That's the so, that's they go out for this. Well, let's, let's yeah. assume, of course, that Godspeed makes it out of this arc. Yeah. That's true, And yeah. also, the speedster villains tend to not hang out with the rogues. The rogues are the blue-collar tech right, yeah, like, I, I guys. Didn't mean, yeah, you know like, I, I mean? Yeah, like, I, I didn't mean part of, like, you know, the, the yeah. actual rogues. I just meant, like, you know, the, oh, okay. the Flash's R- general enemy. Yeah. 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 Um, no, no, I think... Well, see, New 52, what was the reverse Flash in the New 52? Remind me of that. He was he was thawing. That's oh, when I man, stopped raiding Venditti. Right, and he yeah. was putting together a team of like weird rogues. Wasn't he, wasn't he like ending up on the Suicide Squad or something? I don't remember. So there's been an it was, it was thawing, but we've yeah, not had the Hunter's so, Almond yet. Okay. No, because that was Iris's brother. That was Michael West. That was Zoom, who was literally a reverse flash, and that was from the Bucciolato and Manipal run. Um where the villain's issue is told backwards in reverse, which is great. Although he wasn't Zoom, he was reverse Flash. Okay. Thawne was Professor Zoom. Do you know what? I really hope they just wait most of this new 52 ball. And that's, and that's what's great about... Well, we have Wally, right? So that's the one cool thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Wally's cool. Yeah. Second Wally West. Wally West. The, well, from here on, I'll call him Wally West the second, because he is the call, second Call Wally him New West. Wally. Just put an N-U. Or New front. Wally. Yeah, New Wally. So... You know, so he stayed, but like, if they want to wipe all that away, that's fine. They like we're talking, just do. do we're proper... talking about like the Batman continuity, and it's yeah. cool that it's there. And I like the Bucciolato and Manipal run, but don't... outside of uh, yeah. Neil don't... before Rod, yeah. there's nothing that else sticks don't, out. Don't don't give me this weird New Fifty Two crappy Reverse Flash. Yeah. G- give yeah. me proper yeah. Eero Brad Thorn. Give me proper yeah. Hunter's Allman at some point. Don't yeah, just and wipe it wouldn't... away. I feel like I'll get there. Yeah, it wouldn't fact, surprise me if, if by the end, Professor Zoom shows up. Yeah, even actually both of them, either of them could still show up because if Flash and Wally can have memories yep. before everyone else and can, you know, put these pieces together, then it makes sense that Eobard Thorne from the original timeline might, you know, show up at some point. Just like when, when Flashpoint happened, he, he knew mm-hmm. what was going on. He was like, look at what you've done, Barry. You know, that'd be great too if maybe if they could come like uh, tie it into rebirth somehow, like maybe because of you know Wally uh, make it through the you know time stream or or the speed force or whatever. Like, the know, maybe... have a chance, yeah. yeah. Hmm, that could be cool. Yeah, I yep. could see that. So, uh, but back to this issue, we've been off on a bit of a tangent, and it's all Tim's fault because he asked the question. <laughs> um, <laughs> But no, I thought it was a solid issue. I, th- I thought it was good fun. I thought uh, Wally knew Wally's reaction to Mina being in trouble, possibly being dead, was really good. Especially when they didn't know that he even knew her. Yeah. So it was a, quite a nice moment in that sense. Um, My favourite moment also, is actually a really small art detail. Uh-huh. It's it's right at the start where Barry's going over everything. He, you know, he's like going through all the case files and stuff, trying to figure out what's going on. And he's clearly like so intense and so into it, he hasn't even had time to shave. Mm. Yeah, like, which obviously must take him what half a second. Yeah, yeah. he hasn't had half a second, and he, he hasn't even wasted half a second to do something as simple as that. He's just committed everything to this. Yeah, it's a really good point. He, you know, you never really see Barry with a shadow on his face. No. Yeah, but all right. So we'll, it it would definitely be uh, you know fast for him to shave, but then how fast does his hair grow? I was just thinking that. It's <laughs> a good question. Um. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever brought that up. 
Um, maybe, maybe this should be addressed. Yeah, <laughs> these are the important questions that we need to know. I don't care. Do. It's like when Superman gets a beard. Cool. I don't care about the. I I just finished reading that Lois and Clark series, and I loved the yeah. Superman with the beard in that. Uh, oh yeah, super beard. It's cool. Just don't yeah, just yeah. don't overthink it. It's fine. Yeah. With <laughs> with the Flash though, like, do we think Mina did get crisis? Or I I feel that she's so big of a character she can't be gone that quick. I feel like the way they've made her disappear without it being obvious that she's definitely dead makes me think she's yeah. alive. Yeah. But could go. But I thought way. that was a nice touch with Barry realizing what could have happened because he's done that before. Yeah. You know, so. so no, that's good. Uh, so the last thing we should probably mention with the Flash though is the cliffhanger is that. Godspeed and the Flash are fighting, and Godspeed reveals that he can go so fast that he can appear in two places at once. Uh, which actually ties Godspeed. nicely back to issue one, when Barry was, Barry was upset that he couldn't be in two places at once because he was trying to save multiple people and get multiple things done. But I'm wondering, does does Godspeed burn through the Speed Force if he absorbs it? You know, like, because Barry is like the Zen ma- not the Zen Master, that's Max Mercury, but... He's like the master of the Speed Force and and can do all that stuff. So I'm wondering if like all of these all of these talents come with a cost. Like, yeah, he can be in two places at once, but that's when he needs to reabsorb. Is it so more it's like a temporary force. boost. So when he gets the yeah. speed, it's not like a permanent mm-hmm. upgrade. It's just yeah. like And and because yeah. Barry doesn't steal speed, that's why he can't be in two places at once. Because he has more ethical uses for the speed force. Yeah, don't don't uh, drink in Speed Force, folks. I guess. Is yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. The more right. you know. So that's the Flash. Uh, that'll take us on to Green Lanterns issue six, written by Sam Humphries, and art by Will Conrad and Jack Herbert. Um, speaking of the art, before we get to anything else, I thought there were some really quality faces in this. I know it's a really weird thing to say, but there were some really good faces. Whenever there was a close up of a face, especially towards the end of the issue. Yeah. And they were like smiling at each other, giving you a hint of how you know it's a happy ending, I suppose. But uh, I think it's fair, of. given we've kind of complained about the faces a few times in this series. Yeah, yeah so it was it was nice to see it turn around and actually be like, oh, they are actually quite good faces. Yeah, I, so I really like the one of uh, it's a close up of Blee's right at the end. Mm. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, we'll get to Blee's in a minute. Let's talk about the Green Lanterns uh, saving the hey, day. Hey guys, did did you know that Jessica has anxiety and that? Daz is still new to the job. Uh, did, did, we were told again. Yeah. Uh, did, uh, did you know that she uh, had herself in her apartment for three years after her yeah. friends were all killed? I know. I feel like every. It, do you know what it is? It's almost like the start of John's issues all start with "I'm Hal Jordan, I'm the Green Lantern, etc." Two eight one four. Yeah. It's almost like that, but it's a whole page of exposition of the exact same yeah. exposition so, every time. And so yeah, and again, now I just expect it. Now if it's not there, I'm gonna be angry. So <laughs> if the Halloween issue doesn't start with like, oh, I answered a lot of trick or treating in my three years locked in my house. <laughs> Like, you know, but oh, yeah, I, I'm glad this this arc's done because I'm tired of reading Hell Tower. I am um, or Hell Seed. Yeah, I I am glad of that as well. I did like some of the moments. I do feel like I feel like there was almost no reason why it turned around though. I feel like it was just Jessica sitting there feeling like crap until oh no wait. I'm emotional enough that the willpower is happening. Oh right, time to win the fight. Yeah. You know, it, it didn't feel like it had like a natural. Well, I like though that she's like I can't deaden my emotions because my willpower comes from my emotion, mm. and I I like that sentiment and how it made her make a construct and I didn't get what it was supposed to be. I think that was the point that it's open for interpretation because I, someone I'm, looked at it and said how beautiful it was. I'm going to make a a bit of analysis here as to what it huh? is kind of like. Not not what it looks like, yeah. but. The, the way it's kind of not an actual thing, but different people are seeing different things, because it's related to emotions, I think it's kind of like an ink blot, where when yeah. you look at an ink blot and different people see different things, I think that's what it, it's the green So, just, so what, did, what did we hear or think it looked like? To me, it looked like an award you get at like a art show, because it had those sort of like curving tentacle looking mm, okay prisons. okay wow so this this is a peek into is... all our minds <laughs> okay matt so i saw it as like a plant like a, a flower i rising thought a flower up. too yeah. Uh, yeah well shit that means i have the emotional capacity of a ginger and that's not good <laughs> i don't know maybe because it's the green glow but it felt like like it was like a, yeah. a grass glass prism to me almost the way it looked so yeah. it looked like a ward but whatever 
Well, so there we go. That's the art and, and the writing coming together and wanting it to be what I would like it to be because there's still space cops. Like, granted, it's all the space opera, multi-core mm. stuff still, but Jessica and Simon did work together here. Yeah. They, them, like partners. them bonding at the end was the best part for me. Yeah. They, them smiling mm-hmm. at each other and actually finally giving each other compliments was really nice. Oh. And I love the Guardian dude running out and being like, where's Hal Jordan? I don't want you. Yeah. I want Hal Jordan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and also when Jessica gives him the bear, like, hey, look what yeah. I found. Yeah, that's pretty there. cool. Yeah. And that was a nice moment too. But so, yeah, and then the... I love this rogue guardian just because he's such a character. I also I'll, he's over the top. It's he's fun. over the top, yeah. and I love that like uh, Simon's brother and his sister-in-law are trying to like tell him there's this blue dude. He's been here, and like they're almost ignoring them as they're talking about everything yeah. that's just happened. And it's, it's just there's a good bit of sense of fun, which is why I'm looking forward to the Halloween issue with them going trick or treating yep. and stuff. But the big point here, of course, before we get to the red lantern stuff is that the thing that's in the box, the thing that the Guardian has, is a power yep. ring that doesn't have to be, like... It doesn't choose anyone. You can just put it on and use it. It can work yep. for anyone. Oh, wow. Which kind of undermines the White Lantern power, <laughs> right? Well, no, because that was, that was that thing, is that you I could... Th- the White Lantern was that you you were strong enough in all the emotions, though, right? So it's like you, you were you could attach to every part of life. Whereas yeah. this this feels like more like you could be lazy and not care enough about anything to have. You could not. Yeah, a villain be could use this ring. Yeah, whole, and you could, uh, anyone could use. Because the whole it. point in Blackest Night was that it was the Justice League who became the White Lanterns because they were good enough to. Well, there was that, but you also had you know an orange lantern going or an orange ring going to Lex and a yellow ring going to uh, Scarecrow. Well, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, I don't know. That's Phantom Ring. I just. I knew it was coming because of the solicits, but I was also like, all right, I don't need a ninth ring introduced here. Because it's only one, that. I'm actually kind of okay with it because it could be an interesting, you know, it's essentially the MacGuffin for whatever the next story is going to be. And I think yeah. it could be fun in that sense. That's the thing. It's not like it can spawn like another another core from it. It can't. Not yet. It, it, it can't because there's <laughs> no, up, there's no emotional core to tie it to everything else. It is yeah. just its own no. separate little thing but like how do we we don't know anything yet we're all presupposing because i, I thought we were done with the entities and the reveal mm. at the end it's like not quite yeah well yeah so the reveal the two things about the red lanterns we need to talk about is one is that the the whole hell tower thing was just to plan a new red entity in the core of the sun or the core of the earth sorry um yeah. and it's growing inside the uh inside the earth uh, so that's obviously just a plot point for later stories where the Red Lanterns, the Red Lantern Corps will be back at it again. Which annoys me a little bit. Which does annoy me really as well. we were done with the Reds now. But the thing that I do like about the Reds, which I'm actually quite happy about, is Blee's. I, yeah. like, I like where Blee's story might go, because Blee's, <gasps> as you remember a few issues ago, uh, Simon, one of Simon's new powers is that he actually took the hatred out of her, took yeah. out the rage, and she became normal for a brief time. And she now remembers that, and she like wants to be that again or she like Mm -hmm. and she's like scared of atrocities knowing but we hear that atrocities notices or something different but i'm actually kind of liking the idea that we might get a reformed red lantern at some point who could become maybe she'll use the uh the new ring maybe she'll yeah be the the wielder she could and the whole thing i also got from that atrocities kind of already knows because he's all about prophecy Mm. you know so he kind of hinted at blaze him knowing about blaze so but yeah that was cool that was some nice forward progression for characters I don't really care about. Because then even Tross is like, oh, off to new things. We're going to let this egg cook. And then... <laughs> well, that's good. At least it means he's gone for a couple of arcs. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll see yeah. We'll see you in three arcs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, see you then uh, next year or something. Yeah. But yeah, I'm definitely more... I'm glad we're over this. And this was always a book that was on the cusp. And I'm like, well, do I want to read it? And it's, it's definitely passed into the I'm going to keep reading. I think I say this every time, but I like Jessica enough, and I like Baz a fair amount to keep sticking with it as long as it doesn't get any, yep. you know, worse. Well, it's, I guess. It's, <laughs> the next arc is going to be the defining one for me. While I like them, it has to do something plot-wise as well to keep me around. Now the Red Lanterns was enough that it should have driven me away, but it was the promise of something after that's kept me around. I yeah. think I think the Halloween issue is going to win you over, Connor. 
It may well do. I, I, I think it says the guy is still reading Red Hood and the Outlaws. Shut up. I think <laughs> them babysitting uh, like this wacko guardian who is so far but at least been pretty funny. I think is going to yeah. make for a, a fun time. So. Yep. Um, so that's Green Lantern's issue 6 that'll mm. take us on to Batgirl and the Birds of Prey issue 2 uh, written by Julian Shauna Benson and art by Claire Rowe um, I'm having a lot of fun with this I see the opening chase scene in this where it's uh, like all the henchmen chasing them like mm. uh, escorting this guy with Jim Gordon this guy that they captured at the end of the last issue who is involved yeah. in all this Andrew. conspiracy with Oracle yeah. um, I thought all this action was great I thought all of this like you know uh, like them in the bikes, you know, Huntress and Black Canary in the bikes, Canary using a cry, and everything else. You know, I could maybe have done without Batgirl using the shotgun, but she did just shoot the wheel, so it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, I, I liked all that stuff. I thought it was a really fun action sequence that took up the first like third of the book. I thought a good energy to it. And Although, yeah, uh, my only, com- my, I mean, obviously, I still have the complaints that I've had in the last two about the art, but that tends to be faces. Uh, the action when it's fast moving tends to be fun and flowing quite well. I thought it was a bit too dark and shadowy for a lot of the action, personally. Hmm. Like I feel like it, the, uh, especially the shots inside the car with like with Bag and Gordon, like it felt really dark and like overdone. But there was a lot, there was stuff outside as well that was bothering me with that. I don't have that problem, but fair enough. No, yeah, I wasn't either. I just for me, it's the art with the faces and stuff. It can be distracting. Yeah, the faces takes the, me out a little bit. The faces are often a problem in the book. Uh, it's a shame because yeah. it's kind of the biggest problem that we have with the book. At least me and Matt seem to be anyway. Because uh, yeah. I, I actually really enjoyed this issue. I liked, I like Gordon talking to Barbara. Uh, no, obviously not as Barbara as Batgirl. He doesn't, he doesn't know it's Barbara. And right. he's like, you know, are you sure the way to call in the big guns? Like, you know, calling Batman because you, you're not out your element here. And I like that Batman comes to see her at the uh, the clock tower and says, "Like I'm only here to help if you need it. If you want me to reassure Jim, I'll reassure him." You know, right. and then that cool leaving thing he does, where he's like in the other side of the clock, and it looks like the bat signal. Mm-hmm. But I didn't like some of Batman's dialogue, where where he says, uh, "Black Canary and Purple Person." I don't believe we've met. It's like, yeah, that's not Batman. It didn't it didn't sound like Batman at all, especially when that's Helena, and you, I'd have thought. Dick would have kind of informed him of what was going on at least. Well, no, because Dick, Dick doesn't even know that she's ran off to be Huntress. Yeah. No, but he, I feel like he could have had enough information to put stuff together. I say, he could have said in you or in her. Like I don't, we haven't had the pleasure. Mm. But yeah, purple yeah. person's a little bit. Off. I, I guess oh. that's uh, like because obviously the book's got a very fun sense of dialogue with all the other characters, which yeah. fits all them very well, which is worth but mentioning. Not Batman. But not Batman. But I, I guess that's. Uh, them fitting him into the tone of this book, which, you know, it's a fair complaint. It, it didn't stick out to me too much. Like, I, I've seen much worse, like, on Batman dialogue. Oh, yeah. But... Oh, yeah. Fair. It's I did like... Scene, but it did stick out. Yeah. The fun dialogue I liked is when they go to storm the server farm. Yeah. To where the last the last place that uh, Oracle sent... Was it that sent the transmission from? And there's my dog. No, remember... Uh-huh. Well, it may have been, but remember she trolls Batgirl. She sends, like, a message, like, a yeah. joke about the Birds of Prey. And that's right. They and so it. they go to investigate, and they're like, "Well, how do we know Huntress has our back?" And then Huntress takes out people with arrows, and they go, "Well, oh, she has our back." Yeah, and they also you crack know? some jokes or, about, about hazing her and like freezing her bra yeah. and stuff, which is yeah. made for some fun, witty stuff. And it wasn't that she shot people; it was that she saved them from the bomb. And Canary's mm. like, "Well, there goes all doubts. We, she has our back." And yeah, I thought that was mm-hmm. fine. We don't have to freeze our bra anymore. <laughs> and Huntress yeah. is just like, "Yeah, thanks." <laughs> Also, I didn't know that was a hazing thing, so apparently, the more you know. Yeah, apparently yeah. so. Well, to be fair, Matt, we've never been mm-hmm. hazed as females, so... No, but I was just like, freezing the bra, it's just like, at least out here, when it's hot, I would say that's a like welcome hazing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 the professor like, yeah. knows. The professor knows. Oh, no, sometimes when it gets hot, I... I... Like put like blankets or clothes in the. I thought you were gonna say you freeze your brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the other side, this of course is that this all seems to be a bit of a trap to lure them away from the safe house where they're keeping this guy they've kidnapped. Well, not yeah. kidnapped, but the, the guy they've got in custody from the last issue. Yeah. And uh, Finis, who's the uh, villain, has sent in her team of uh, meta-human villains to uh, assassinate him, presumably, or capture him. Snake squad. Yeah, the sixth <laughs> snake squad. Um, <laughs> Which is obviously the fun little cliffhanger for the next issue. Something else I liked in this book, I liked that the captions for the locations had little like jokes attached to them. 
Um, yeah. I like the one where it says that this is the GCPD safe house, and underneath it says uh, "safe's in the title. Nothing bad can possibly happen here." Like I thought that was a fun little touch. I liked that. Yeah. And so I don't. I like that this book exists and does that stuff, but I don't want all my books to do that. Oh no! So no. that's fine. This is, this is, so this like, is... If if Batgirl started doing stuff like that, I or Supergirl, I'd be like, "Come on, guys, know the tone." But yeah. here, the tone matches, so it's fine. Yeah, that, this is clearly doing its own thing. It's got its own feel to it because of its own creative team, obviously. And I think it's for me, it's working quite well. Obviously, I have the issues with the art. I have the issues with the face. He's always looking yeah. weird, but. Other than I'm that, really I'm enjoying not, it. I, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. I'm I'm on the cl- I'm close to dropping it to be honest. Oh, but Red Hood's oh, still I'm sticking make... around. <laughs> well, I tried to drop that and you wouldn't let me. <laughs> yeah. Well, Fair you enough. made your bed. You must lie in it now. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm going to the end of the arc on this one before just because if we're gonna have other weeks like this, I don't have the time. That's the to, thing. To like, read this, it. This was like the second to last thing I read. Uh, oh no it wasn't for me like like if i'm going to start dropping stuff this wouldn't be in the first you know the the only thing i read after this was red hood oh dear well i i just read mine and whatever's going to be easy uh at the time because i have to fit them into work and whatnot so um i usually try to read the stuff i'm least excited first and then make my way and kind of save the See, I tend to do a mixture. I tend to do some of the least excited, and then some of the stuff I'm excited for, and then the stuff that I just ah, I'll I'll get to play. The exception is if it's like a really big book that I like, yeah. don't want to get spoiled or something. Maybe I'll read that first. But well, that's yeah. Usually, I leave detective in action until right before we record, and I'll read those right then so they're fresh. But with what happened in detective this time, and Pete going, hey, there's spoilers abound. Be careful. Yeah, I read that as my first book. Oh yeah, as, as yeah, soon as soon as I read that, I knew there was going to be spoilers all over the internet for it. And sure enough, I went on Twitter like twenty minutes later and I seen something from it. I'm like, I'm glad I read that first. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. So, so, but I usually do what what Tim does, and I'll try to save the stuff that I'm really looking forward to to last. Yeah, I'm the so. opposite. I start with the big and when when you know go my way down as a as I go. Um, all right, so that's back on the birds of prey. I seem to be having the most fun with it. Um, mm-hmm. It's not on the cusp for me. I have some issues, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, moving on to Superwoman issue two, Phil Jimenez on both writing and art. We really liked issue one of this, yep. and um, well, issue two is not as strong. It's not as like out the gate, like super yeah. amazing, yeah. but. I, I still really enjoyed it. I enjoyed that they're yeah. expanding her supporting cast. Lana's getting her supporting cast, which includes Steel and Steel's niece, oh. which makes sense because Steel's are Natasha's boyfriend. back. <laughs> so great. A big Natasha fan? Yeah, well, I just choose... I love smaller characters like this that yeah. don't need their own book, but they could pad other people's books, yeah. and so... I think you know, she was good in a uh, fifty-two. I love a good uh, yeah. supporting yeah. cast, and yeah, don't let Marvel fool you into thinking that Riri is the first young black yeah. woman who builds armor. Don't don't let Marvel yeah. fool you. We've had Natasha you much longer. Like we're trying to, I don't think. <laughs> you're the closest no. thing here to a Marvel fan, Tim. So you, you're getting yeah, the yeah. abuse. But yeah, so <laughs> I thought it was just a little bit stepped down. I thought it was heavy on the dialogue. Like I found myself getting lost at points. It might have been because I read it super late, right before bed, too. Um, but, like, I'm going to... It's, it's nothing that made me be like, well, this yeah. is garbage. I'm not going to read this anymore. I wasn't... Lo- I mean, I do think it was a bit more worthy than the last issue. Yeah. And I think, obviously, that's a, that's, that's there, but I feel like the getting the supporting cast in, giving her more of a people around her, getting Maggie Sawyer in, who seems to also be a recurring character, and I, I like the moment where she's like, oh, I think I've made kind of a friend in a high place, because... They kind yep. of connect when she's been interviewed. Yep. I might I'll be, be honest. Go on. Uh, oh. uh, as I think I might be kind of the opposite of you guys. I think I kind of like the second issue a little better. All right. Um, oh, Jimmy. Now, part of it might be that um, uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to read this series at first, so I knew the first issue had some big spoilers. So, like, Pete explained to me what happened. So yeah. when I did go back and read the first issue, uh, maybe it didn't have as much of an impact for me because I kind of knew what was going to happen. So that could play into it. But um, I kind of liked in the second issue just expanding the story and kind of, um, like, getting kind of seeing more of the villains and stuff. And uh, that's kind of got me a little more intrigued. Yeah, I think it was good world building around Lana. Because we set up her in the first yeah. issue. And gave her like made us care about her. And well, and and that whole first issue was about how people leave her, mm. and yeah. Clark's left her, her parents have left her, and now she has John and Natasha and Sawyer 
even Lex to a smaller extent, you know. Um, and then the reveal of who the villain was, I thought, was a nice little touch. Matt is always so desperate to get to the end of the book. You know well, what? Yeah. Not to the end of the book, just just because they could have drug this out for a whole arc. No, it's and just they a- give it to you. It's just something I've noticed with you, Matt. Sometimes, whatever it goes to you yeah. for your opinion, you always somehow manage to jump to whatever right. the ending point's going to be. And I'm like, Matt, let's get right. to it naturally. Let's, let's, you know, go through the um, points. But I just, I just wanted to point out though, with the, with the, the Bizarro women, whatever they are. Yeah. Like we still don't know what those are. We don't know what they and... are. We we have learned that they can disguise themselves because one of them is yep. disguised as Lexi's a uh, assistant. Mercy. Mercy. Yeah. Yeah, in a universe where she doesn't get uh, blown up by one of Alexa's machinations. Jeez. <laughs> um, so, there's that going Yet. on. Also, Lana is uh, sick. Her powers are taking a toll on her. Um, okay. Seemingly, she thinks she's going to go the same way as New 52 Superman and New 52 Lois, which I'm assuming won't happen because she has a book, and I'm also assuming that uh, because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want it to happen. Well, they introduced uh, Natasha Iron, so there's no saying that she can't be Superwoman. Uh, don't, no, don't that. Uh, no, let's keep Lana. <laughs> don't, don't say something nasty like that. I'm not saying I want that. I'm just saying I wouldn't put it past it. <laughs> uh, no, no, let's keep Lana. But no, so she's obviously worried about her health, and I'm sure that'll be like a big thing in the first arc. Like, I'm sure by the end of the first arc, she'll have yeah, got a cure, so to speak. Yeah, she'll have solved the, whatever the issue is. Um, but no, I'm enjoying that. I'm enjoying the goofy villain. Uh, what, what's the villain that attacks the parade that still fights for a bit? Oh, the radioactive yeah. dude. Mm. What's he, what's his name? Oh, the what? atomic skull. Atomic skull. Yeah, thank skull. you. Yeah. That is so goofy. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So goofy. Um, that was that was from the era that this is totally not Ghost Rider. It's an atomic skull. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Well, if they're if they're copying Natasha with Riri, we can we can yeah. copy Ghost Rider with uh, atomic skull here. Why not? Uh, yeah. Well, wasn't he like a JSA villain? I could be wrong, but I probably. Yeah, he's been say... around for a while, but yeah. in the eighties he got the refurb into a biker okay. type character. I feel like yeah. I feel like any sort of like villain who's below C list is probably been a JSA villain at some point because they they tend <laughs> yeah. to pull in all the, the 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 low names and all that to fill out their yeah. stories. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, the the big reveal at the end. Let's talk about that. So the villain behind us, the villain who's running the super uh, bizarro women people. Yep. Uh, it turns out to be someone who we guessed, I think, uh, when the last issue was talked about. I think we did. Yeah. If we didn't do it on the show, I'm sure someone I was speaking to mentioned it. Um, and yeah. that is uh, Lena Luther is the one behind it all. And she captures Lex at the end. And she's yeah. the one behind it all. So, that should be And uh, uh, Kryptonite Man makes an appearance here too, right? Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. He's and in the so I... cells. Yeah, yeah, he's in the all about the cells. Uh, so Lena's the baddie, which is cool. It kind of it actually works in a really nice way that if this is a Superwoman comic, that the villain will be the female Lex Luthor. Like it actually yeah. has a nice. Well, especially with Luthor taking an anti-hero role, you know. Yeah. Uh, so no, I like that touch. That I think thematically it works really well to be her first villain. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, all, all I could think about when she showed up as well is that the actress from Jurassic World who gets killed off in the most brutal way possible in that movie is going to play her yeah. in the show. And I just remember in the description for the Supergirl oh, season man. two. Do you not know uh-huh. that? Oh, I did not know that. Oh, news to Matt. Um, oh, that's fantastic. You should watch the uh, TV news that goes up uh, on this very YouTube channel. <laughs> I should, channel, but really. as I said, I have trouble getting through my comics. <laughs> so. He's got a lot of squats to do. Yeah, he's got his quest today. Um, Breaking records. But all, all I could think of is during the, des- the description for Supergirl season two that uh, d- d- describes her uh, like her coming on the show says that oh Lena Luthor shows up in National City and Supergirl has to figure out if she's a friend or a foe. And all I could think was yeah she's going to be like the evil villain by the end of the season. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's no way she's going to be a good character. It's well if you have the Luthers and Max Lord, it's kind of redundant. I was just I was just waiting show. for Wonder Woman to make a cameo and snap his neck. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> just flies in, snaps leaves. That's uh, <laughs> but but yeah, with Superwoman, I I enjoyed it. I liked the reveal at the end and the character. Well, the supporting cast building. Yeah, I liked all that stuff. Enough. I think but it's... yeah, there were certain parts that were just rough to get through. And again, I don't know if it was just me being sleepy because it was the end of the night or what. I think, so. and I'm hopeful that you know when this is done, this arc, and you go back and read it as a trade as one. 
I think it'll read fine. I think this is just yeah. your typical second issue, try to like put a lot of the pieces in place for later. Yeah, John Swain. I drew. I know this is weird, but I kind of miss Lois. I really liked the interplay and the dynamic between the two, yeah. where I feel I'm like sure this, this issue suffered a little bit. Maybe it'll be fine once the supporting cast builds a bit more and we get mm. a bit more repertoire between them. But for now, I feel like it's missing something that the first issue had. Yeah, well, I'm so, that's something it can fix over time, like you said. It can. So. And also, I thought Lex was a bit weird at the, the, right at the start. Like, the way he was like, no, armor's not working. Where's Superwoman? It just kind of felt very un-Lex. I don't it, know. Fe- it felt like, why wouldn't he say Superman? Because he knows Superman's kicking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, it just felt weird and off to me. Did you that... enjoy it? No, you did enjoy it to me, but any, any points you'd like to add before we move on? Um, no, I think uh, it's good. I, I think maybe I'm enjoying it a little less than you guys, but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it, it's a, a bad book. Um, I think uh, Phil Jimenez is doing a really good job. Um, I do feel like he's kind of falling a little bit into that uh, artist-turned-writer trap where I think it's a little overwritten. Um, but yeah, you know, definitely not that it's like a overly bad or anything. For mm-hmm. me, this is more just like a not a great book, but um, you know, like a, a good book. Cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, that'll <laughs> take us on to New Superman issue three, written by Jean Lun Yang and art by Victor Bogdanovich. Uh, we really liked issue two of this, and issue three I think continues that trend. This was more fun, yeah. and I loved. I loved my favourite part of this book, and there was a lot of good stuff, but my favourite part of this book, because the last issue ended with uh, Keenan revealing who he was to the world. He took off his, his goggles things, and he's like, I'm Keenan Kong, I am the new Superman, because he he's you know attracted to the, the reporter. And, he's uh, a prick. But <laughs> I, and I love that as soon as like Chinese Batman and Wonder Woman come into the thing, he's like, oh, and this is Chinese Batman and Wonder Woman. We are the Justice League of China. My favourite thing was the reactions. It cut to Lex Luthor, it cut to Batman, and it cut to the Great Ten, and we see all of their reactions to the Justice League of China, and just Batman being like, hmm. Yeah, being grumpy. Was that in blue font, too? Was that in the blue coloring? Yeah. It was grumble, but in English? Yeah. That was a nice touch. Which is something I wanted out of this book from the beginning, was how it interplays with the rest of the DC Universe. And I'm glad that we got that because uh, the interplay between, what's her name, Dr. Omen and yeah. General right. August and Irons, you know, I, I think that's going to become important as this goes on. No, uh, yeah, you know? I think you're right. I think that's cool. And I think the other thing this issue did really well is it started to uh, build a bond between Keenan and the other two, the, you know, the, the, yeah. the Wonder Woman and the Batman. Uh, and and Keenan calls him Tubby. Yeah, and, like he's such a dick. And Keenan like <laughs> wanting to make fun of his face because this is the first time he's yeah. seen him without the mask, but biting yeah. his lip because he wants to make friends. <laughs> yep. Biting it till he goes numb. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. My lips numb because yeah because every so often he'll say something else like you know uh, Tubby will keep saying stuff and yeah. it'll cut back to Keenan's like narration. He's like still biting, like still yeah. bit, like every time he wants to say something. Uh, but yeah, but I, I like that Chinese Wonder Woman sort of reaches out to him after a she kind of sympathizes with why he revealed who he mm-hmm. was, and b after uh, Doctor Omen like like hurts him with that gun. Yeah, because I was like really out of line. Like yeah, well I feel like by the end of the first arc or maybe a couple of arcs and they're going to like break away from her and they're going to be rogue yeah. and do their yeah. own thing. But nah, so far oh aye favorite joke of the issue actually. Mm-hmm. Is it the Aquaman joke? The Aquaman joke. So they they, they figure out who of the next course. target's going to be for this group of supervillains, and there's this Hydra. He's like, all right, it's time to call in the Chinese Aquaman. He's like, we don't have one. <laughs> Why? <laughs> we didn't think it was uh, needed. Didn't, didn't see the point. Didn't think it was yeah. this. Yeah, didn't see the point. Yeah. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> that was a good joke. Yeah. That was pretty good. Uh, but no, uh, so we get that guy that uh, Keenan like stood up to in the first issue. He pops back up with the oh. rest of his team. Um, yeah, black condor. Yeah, is that a blue condor? Blue condor. There yeah. you go. Uh, and then his leader, and like that—that's the cliffhanger for the next issue. So, no, 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 no. we also see Keenan Kong's dad. Yeah, that's the last uh, thing I was going to mention. Yeah. Okay. React to it, and um, you guys want to place odds on that? Their little study group are also these. They're they're tied in. 
you know, Close group. the way that he says we need to move quick and then we see that group at the end of the issue would make it seem like it might be. I don't know. And they're investigating the Ministry of Self-Reliance mm-hmm. and they're attacking their funding. Yeah. So I just I thought all the pieces are there. Nice but, little mystery going on. Yeah, they are there. It could be a misdirect, but I think it's definitely a possibility. It would be interesting to see if uh, in the next issue, if like they have a fight with the, the Chinese Justice League and if yeah. it looks like he avoids trying to hurt Keenan, maybe. We can maybe yeah. pick up on that next time. But uh, hopefully... Uh, that was fantastic. We'll but yeah, it's just it's a fun book. It's a lot of fun. It's really good. I'm, I'm happy to read it. I'm glad it is monthly. Because um, I'm mm. glad it's a nice nice treat once a month yeah no i, I think you're right i think there's a couple of the monthly ones that i wish were twice a month but this one no. i'm kind of like it's really good but i'm kind of okay with it being monthly yep yeah. so uh yeah. so That's, i haven't been reading this but you, would you you'd say it's like worth checking out yeah yeah once yeah. once the first trade comes out i would definitely okay. check it out it's yeah i've tried to compare the, it like something. the premise sounded interesting um yeah. but then i feel like i've like heard like nothing bad about it but nothing like overly like oh man you gotta check this out so that's why i haven't really rushed out yeah if you're on a limited budget i would say pass yeah trade weight but i feel like it's definitely worth reading it's it's a really good so far it's been good like issues two and three have been really really great yeah i I don't think it's a a must read book but i think it's a lot of fun and it's a nice break from other things which are must reads okay i do like the great 10 so it is cool hearing that uh they're in it yeah. Yeah. So. Well, they're not that featured, but they may be yeah. soon. I mean, they could. But they might be more. soon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. But yeah, so that's a uh, new Superman issue three. Uh, that'll take us on to Suicide Squad issue two, uh, written by Rob Williams and art by Jim Lee. Now, really, the first chunk of it's just them like dealing with the fact that they're in the water from the last issue and nearly dead. But obviously, Croc can swim and helps them and stuff, and they're fine. They I get, like how they joke about him being an alien. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, and they get into their their underwater building. Their is that a prison? No, it's not a prison. It's like because they've got different stuff like kept there though. It's like a vault almost. Based thing. Yeah, whatever. But anyway, um, <laughs> but I feel like the big thing about what we talk about is the ending. Like that's the thing, right? It's the ending. There's two things that happen at the end, or three things. We find out what they're after is a a thing for the Phantom Zone. It's a portal to the Phantom Zone. Ooh. Zod shows up and uh, Captain Boomerang gets eviscerated. Oh no. And leaves his feet. Yeah. Just his feet, just sitting there like stumps. <laughs> and my only... Could happen to a nicer person. And I'm actually kind of okay <laughs> with it. Like I th- feel like, yeah, you know what, if you want to kill one, Boomerang's an okay one to take out. My only issue with it is that I'm pretty sure the, not solicit, but the announcement of Justice League vs. Suicide Squad mentioned Captain Bad Boomerang. Boomerang. Yeah, so I wonder mm. if that was well, just I had like... Harley... I also thought Harley it was weird. Harley holding a boomerang? Yeah, yeah, one of them was holding it on the cover. It was, it was just yeah. Harley and Batman on the cover. Yeah. I thought it was particularly weird we had the backup was Boomerang and it was, fo- like you know, like shone the spotlight on him after he was just seemingly eviscerated. It seems yeah. like, why? Why? Surely you want to have that before this event, if this is to make you care. Maybe it's just you need dead shot, though. But it's, so. it's, to, it's to make you care just after you've seen him die, so I guess... But it doesn't have the same impact, then. Sure, like, you, you want to make you care when you see him die, not, oh, he's dead, oh, now maybe I care. No, I've seen it done this way before. Because what, what you do here is it makes the whole backup story bittersweet. It gives it this air of sadness about the whole thing. It just has a different effect. What, if you think that's the, the, the wrong way to go about it, then yeah, that's purely a taste thing but I've seen it done both ways hmm. um, backup was okay I wasn't super into it I actually I did enjoy this issue the main story a bit more I think because it had that big ending with Zod and I'm like oh crap that's actually quite an interesting villain for them that's someone with Superman's powers for the Suicide Squad to fight but he's evil so you're okay to fight him Like you, you, you want to root for him because Zod is proper evil so Matt and I, still probably wants to root for Zod, though. Let's be honest. It probably does, but I was. I feel like I think the best I thing about say it. I'd root for Zod. Yeah. Like, I think the I best thing my... about it, though, is that it was a genuine surprise. Like I had no idea that Zod was going to be involved in this. Yeah, I didn't either. Like, 
came out of nowhere and I was like oh that's actually really surprising I'm quite impressed um, so I'm, I'm at least sticking with it for another issue I want, I want to see how this plays out you know it's a fair point that DC have done a, a rather good job of surprising us with things in Rebirth I mean you go back to Detective the ending we didn't know that was yeah. coming first issue of Superwoman the, the, first issue of Superwoman now this there's been quite a lot where it's like how oh, we really had no idea I think they're just holding back in that thing that they used to always do and Marvel still do where they'll promote it and like publicise it. Yeah, advance, like here you go, yeah. here's such and such is dying. Death yeah. of Captain Boomerang on the top. <laughs> yeah. Because so yeah, that'll make people care. <laughs> yeah. You'll make the headlines. Yeah. Yeah. I like there's much else to say. I think it was fine. There were some good jokes. Um, Banter was pretty decent and they had a nice big surprise and ending that I, didn't really, I really didn't see coming and I think it'll be an interesting conflict in the yeah. next few issues. So, so I think I, I enjoyed the backup as well. I like the idea that, that everyone's a hero of their own story, and he really played with that, telling his story. Matt, did you read the backup? I didn't read Suicide Squad. <laughs> oh, you didn't read Suicide Squad? Not being up to the first, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Fair <laughs> but enough. I'm not going forward. Yeah. All right, that's me and Connor that's covering that then. But um, yeah, yeah, it was all right, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, I Again, I'm, I'm down for When the you next said one. Zod showed up, I thought you were messing with me because you knew I didn't read it. <laughs> oh no, Zod showed up. <laughs> no. so, uh, the, the cliffhanger mm. of this book is Zod like popping out of the Phantom Zone oh. and being like Neil before Zod. Like, oh wow, it's happened last time you didn't read some as well, isn't it? That it was Superman. Was it's Superman. Yeah, it's yeah. always something some Superman shows up. <laughs> yeah, that's end. why I figure you guys are just messing with me. Going, <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, that'll take us on to Deathstroke issue two, which I did not read because I didn't want to, oh. but uh, Matt and Connor have read it. Uh, this is written Ooh, by Christopher Priest and art by Carlo Pugalame. So, uh, on you go. Go ahead, Connor, because all I'm going to do is gush <laughs> about this book. It is so good, isn't it? Yep. So oh, man. Just I don't understand espionage. how Peter's dropped yeah. it. I really don't. Oh, I, I get it, and I think you should go back and read it in trade. Because I feel this is going to be the defining character arc for Deathstroke. Because it's kind of retconning his family life. And yeah. also making him like he's not just this disposable mercenary villain that we've seen on Arrow. And that Deadpool got copied from. Like it's giving the character gravitas in ways that I haven't seen before. Yeah, because so, obviously he's had these kids for a while. Yeah. They've been around and gone and whatever. But... This is the first time we've seen like actual connections and see why we should care about them as a family connection other than just they are a family connection. Yep, exactly. And they even play with that more because as the story goes, uh, we're introduced to the, his band of mercenaries with Wintergreen and they fly into uh, Cambodia and they, they kind of hint that it was a little while ago because they're talking about the Khmer Rouge and if they still realize that they're not in power and there's some jokes that like they don't get CNN out here, so tell them that. And you find out that their mission is to go take someone out from this like brothel. And at the end, it's it well not at the end. During that arc, you see there's a silver-haired girl who is about eight, and they all kind of question Slade like, "What's going on? This is this who we're here to get?" Yeah, I think I think it says she's ten at the time. Okay, so she's ten, yeah. and uh, and it's it's Rose, you know Wilson, yeah. and it's the first time we've seen her, I think, in a while. So that was a nice little, and they they play with, you know, because we also get teased about Deathstroke's current wife that he has with the the two sons, which that was a nice scene in the beginning where she's like, I'm gonna go get your dad, your brother will watch you, and then he's like, No, he said he was leaving. And then it's just and Joey just by throw, himself. And he just throws a party. And he throws a party, yeah. And uh, we also get that in the mercenary group, one of the guys flipped. And that's who told, uh, you know, Deathstroke. They were, it's, yeah. Basically, they're trying to find out who, who kidnapped Wintergreen. And the guy that disseminated the info was one of their former guys. And it's just a nice little espionage book. And we're peeling back the pieces. And we find out that Dr. Icon is still a hero in Canada. And yeah, Deathstroke some good gives him, with him. Yeah, he gives him some crap. Like, oh, yeah, you're the best hero on this whole 12 blocks in a city that, you know, nobody cares about. And yeah, he's and the and same he, guy that decided the suit that they recovered in the last issue. Yeah, and, um, and he jokes because uh, Icon's saying, oh, it's a gravity sheath that does all that. Yeah. Like, it's got all this stuff, it, tidal effects. 
And Slay's just like, force field. Just say force field, damn it. Well, it's more than a force field. It's like, nah, it's still a force field. Uh, and, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and then they finally, Wintergreen breaks their, their one guy that flipped on him. And they start cracking the info. And they come to find out that in, and this is where I got lost. Were they Slade's files that were encrypted? Or were they Slade, like, were they being stuff hidden from Slade? I, I thought they were Slade's files, but now okay. that you say it, I'm not sure. Yeah. But basically, you see the Ravager is one of someone that's on his hit list to yeah. go after. And it ties up that this girl that he had, he had saved eight years ago yeah. is now running around. Which, when this series started and we saw the Suns, and uh, we're familiar enough with that they become the Ravager and Jericho... I was like, well, where's Rose? Are they going to do Rose? And they do. Yeah. As, and she's the Ravager as well. Though. Yeah. So I wonder if they're going to go along with Grant and that whole story arc. But Also, I really like, you know, when, when they get the information, once they're finished, they just put the bottle through his neck. It's like yeah. so grim and efficient. But mm -hmm. they, they just like completely ignore it. Like nothing's yeah. happened. Well, there's that. And, and also throughout the art, like when they go to retrieve the info and there's that couple that's there for Slade and they're waiting mm. on him and they're like, Oh no, he's, he's not here. We're renting his loft. But clearly like the way that they're drawn, their, their, their hands, you can't see their hands. And the girl pulls a screwdriver, I think, right. Or like an ice pick. Yeah. Some of that. And she ends up with that, you know, in her. So taken out, but yeah, it was the arts. Great. The story is great. It's, it's such a surprise because I associate Deathstroke with not good. Like he's almost a punchline because of Arrow and the whole shadow, shadow. Yes, yeah. And like it's here, it's it's almost back to the Marv Wolfman where this is a guy you don't want to mess with, and he's out for himself. So it's not that hard to to stay away from him. But once he's on your scent, there's nothing. Yeah, definitely. And oh, the my favorite part I think was uh, Deathstroke leaves. And the one guy they're trying to pull information out of is like, oh, I hate when he does that. And Wintergreen's like, well, you know, he did that before Batman did. <laughs> yeah. You know, so they're just playing with that. So, it, it, again, we talked about it earlier with the connected universe. Like, it doesn't feel like – feels like Deathstroke's off on his own, but there's still ties to Batman and other characters. Yeah, he, he's off on his own little mission, but he's still mm -hmm. part of the world. Yeah. So, yep, definitely, definitely enjoyed Definitely. All right, cool. Tim, uh, what were you looking at on your phone that entire time? Uh, you look really focused. I was just going through different stuff. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Slade doesn't care about Deathstroke enough. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, if if you guys say it's really good, I'll maybe I'll check it out at some point. But it just doesn't have um, really any interest for me. I think he's a great villain. I just can't really well, that's imagine thing, wanting this to read a book about this him. This isn't playing him as a good guy. Yeah. And it's not trying to, so it's so it works. Well, and it helps that you have Christopher Priest coming in. I feel like if we get someone that's not of that level of writer, it could go bad very quickly. Yeah. But just the way he's revealing stuff through flashbacks and how, you know, it goes to the issue. So it's almost serialized in a way, to where uh, each issue kind of can can stand alone because they're kind of self-contained. But as you read them, more's you know, there's a yeah. bigger picture being painted. They are excellently paced good. with the flashbacks as well. Yep. Like they're always intercut at exactly the right moment. Mm hmm So. Yeah. All right. Uh, that'll take us on to Connor's Corner. So, yeah. Connor, keep these brief because we are running long on this because we have yeah. so many books. Yep. Uh, first up, you've got Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Court, issue four, uh, written by Robert Vendetti and art by Ethan Van Skyver. First up, what the hell, Matt? I thought you were reading this with me. No, nah, man. I dropped, as you said last time, we got no Gardner. I was out. See, this time, we got a load of Gardner. See, you know... Every, <sighs> it, it does this. Basically, what happened was some yellow lanterns, like, they pulled the, the bag to Sinestro, and they're like, oh, we got the green lantern for you. And he's like, oh, see. And they pull out Guy Gardner. <sighs> and uh, so he has some... some banter with Sinestro. Mm -hmm. You know, the usual stuff. Sinestro talking down to him, like, eh, you're not good enough, I wanted Hal. As you'd expect. Mm. Guy's 
posturing as you'd expect. Yeah. Uh, Sinestro, they drain his ring and he tries to do, to to use it and he, he comes up with like a he sends like a truck at Sinestro and Sinestro's like really sneering. It's like oh, all the imagination you can do anything and you come up with a truck, but that uses up the last of his uh his his ring energy and yeah. turns out he wears nothing underneath. <laughs> so, of course he doesn't uh, exactly so the, uh, the suit kind of dissipates when the energy comes out and he's just stood there and he doesn't shy away from it he's like what you really tell me you wear something under that <laughs> yeah as you'd expect um some of the other yellows did take hal though and but um saranix got him and she's patching him up and and uh keeping him alive sinestro's plan still going on you know he's got a big fear machine not entirely sure what's going on with that, to be honest. He, <laughs> he's, you know how before they were like trying to capture all the Wait, everyone you, that was scared. Are you scared? sure it's not the Fear Tower? Which, I'm pretty yeah. sure. It's, it's, I'm sure. pretty sure Edgy is called Fear Machine. And this is just my problem with Venditti. I love all his supporting characters, but when it comes to the main character and the main story, it's so it's, just no. It's tedious, and that was my problem with the Flash when yeah. when he got to. To reverse flash or zoom, whoever it was, whatever the plan was, it was just like really like you're going through time and collecting people. Yeah, why? That's, that's kind of what it feels like here again. Similar sort of things. Like uh, why? But then at the end, uh, John Stewart's like, right, guy's missing. What, what should we do? Let's go after him. So uh, going to be some confrontation. Could be fun. Gotcha. Could. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Could. Yeah. Probably Could. not. <laughs> It, it it really depends. Like the, the more they throw Guy and John, the better. Yeah. Uh, but every time it comes up with Hal and Sinestro, I lose interest. So I'm really torn on this book still. All right. Well, that'll take Connor on to talking about his favourite book of the month, and that is Red Hood and the Outlaws issue right. to. Written... I feel like this book. No, we're not even going. No, he doesn't get credit. All right. <laughs> no, this book is desperately trying to get Matt to read it. Because you know how I mentioned last time that the big the massive axe. axe. Yeah. It Mjolnir's where she can summon it. And it like flies towards her. Who's this? Uh, Artemis. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I just, he was on Twitter this week and basically suggested people should pirate his books. Because a pirated book is better than nobody reading his book. Oh, wow. I would suggest don't kind of even pirate this. <laughs> and that's my thing is yeah, just don't. This is honestly possibly the longest feeling comic I've ever read in my life. There's a four page <laughs> prologue about Artemis and I could have sworn it was most of the issue by the time I got to the end of it. <laughs> and then we get more so, of Jason going, Oh, I'm gonna do it Batman's way because I want Batman to like me. <laughs> I don't know. What I can guarantee you I've never thought that. <laughs> <laughs> so the team doesn't get together. No. Basically, they're, they're attacking this train for Black Mass because he's working for Black Mass oh now. And um, he's like, oh, there's a weapon. We'll get it. It's some genetic thing, and it shows like a, a Superman clone at this, right at the end of this reveal. And it's like, okay, this is presumably going to lead to Bizarro. Yeah. But it's not It's not Bizarro-esque clone. It's a very normal-looking clone. Perhaps a little shriveled because it's like doesn't seem to be that alive. It's kind of in a tank, you know? Yeah. But it's okay. not bizarro So you've not quite got to Bizarro yet? No, not Seems even close. Leading I'm you really down that path, down but not point. quite there. Yeah, not yeah. Quite. Oh my god. The, the first issue had all three on the cover, and not yeah. not once have <laughs> they stood together. No. So, um, yeah, so Connor's hooked in then for at least issue three at this point, probably at least up to issue six, I imagine. We're going to at least let him, we're going to make him finish the arc for everyone's enjoyment. I'm not his, but the rest of us have enjoyment out of it. Oh, man. I'm going to say this too. If you really are interested in Bizarro, go back and check out Heath Corson's Bizarro Mini that came out of that DCU initiative. That was really it's good. A, I recommend it's it. a lot of fun. And you get guest artists doing spots. You know, mm. like at one point you have uh, Albuquerque doing, you know, an Adam Strange uh, jetpack with uh, a, a Hawkman harness and whatnot. And just, it'll stop you from meeting Red Hood and the Outlaws. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> it's goofy. It's fun. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Well, let's take us on to the last book this week. So yeah, we've got a book after Connor's Corner, which is a little bit weird, but it's because it's kind of a separate thing. We're going to talk about Doom Patrol issue one. This is the first book from DC's Young Animal line, which is kind of like a, almost a Vertigo line, but not really, but in the continuity of the universe. Is it yeah. in continuity? I think well, it is. I, I'm not sure here with people. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure if it's like... See, a lot of it still feels like it's an alternate universal thing where... Maybe it is. They, they exist. You, like, you know, like, uh... I'll be honest, I didn't understand what I read. So <laughs> No one understands what they read, man. No, okay. no, no, they did. Well, I feel there's people online, and They're I don't want to say their names, that are going to be like, oh, I totally got it. Like, you guys just don't get it because you're not, you know... You're not cool enough to read well, stuff on this before, level. Well, before we run away with it, um, Doom Patrol issue one is written by Gerard Way mm-hmm. and it's got art by oh. Nick Darrington. And um, we mainly focus on an ambulance driver. Uh, what's her name again? Oh, I forgot her name. Flat? the main title of the book. It's not clear. Hmm. It's, uh, oh, it begins with like a C. Something. It's a C, yeah, because it's our birthday, yeah. isn't it? Or it was going to be our birthday. Casey. Right? Casey, Casey, that's it. Casey, Casey Brink? Yeah, Casey Brink. She's an ambulance driver, and we see her, you know, taking a body back to the hospital, and we see her on her break. She uh, is with her partner. She's playing an arcade machine while he's eating a burrito, and she goes home, has a fight with her roommate, and gets a new roommate when a new person shows up and makes <laughs> him explode into a party, like, <laughs> popper type situation. Um... <laughs> That's yeah, all don't forget about to... Robot Man. Also, Robot Man shows up and explodes. We've got a robot. The year he gets run but... over. Yeah, it's not exploding. That's right. Right. He gets happy after that's, right. that's kind of like a Robot Man's thing, though. He always gets uh, like and, and broken get up that. and stuff, <laughs> which is great. But, so I am I the only one who's Doom Patrol? You yeah. haven't? No, uh, I've never I read. One who... I have no. never read okay. Doom Patrol in my life, Tim. This is new to me. So. so um... I, I really like this issue, and I'm actually I'm a pretty big fan of the Doom Patrol, and, and not just Morrison's run. Um, like I haven't read everything that they've been in, but um, there was a good Teen Titans arc that Johns wrote that's, with them. And, that's uh, what I was gonna bring up. Is that's my introduction, and the only way I know Doom Patrol is yeah. through the Johns, and it was that one arc. Like, yeah, the, did that they get one a book out of that? Good. I've What's seen that? them show up every so often. They, in the New Fifty Two, didn't they? Well, there was, um, well, before that, uh, Matt, like, after that, I don't know how soon it was after, but Keith Giffen did a, a, a run yeah. on them, which was actually pretty good as well. Um, I, I really like Doom Patrol, because they are, and, and I know this book is really weird, but that's kind of like the point of the Doom Patrol, like, they are a really weird, offbeat superhero team, and uh, Gerard Way is actually, like, you know, Friends with Morris, and I, I feel like they have. Yeah. Joe, it's funny, Tim, as you said, they're an offbeat superhero team, and all I could think is, wait, this is about a superhero team? <laughs> I didn't get that at all. It's what? Not yet, it's not. Yeah. Well, it's... no, but like, I was, like, I get Dr. Calder and Robot Man, and was it Negative Man? The one that uh, can jump? Yeah, the. the uh... Yeah, negative man. I'm trying to say, like, during uh, Morrison's run, he combines with, like, uh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold a on. woman, too. And... Yeah. Before we start talking about things that we, people know from actual previous things, let's just talk about what's on the issue, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, out of all those characters that I think I know about Doom Patrol, Robot Man's the only one that shows up. Yeah. Uh, you're so, Robot Man. Aside from, like, the one page of Niles Calder. Right, so. Yeah. So, at the <laughs> so we, fo- we follow. Uh, I forgot her name again, Casey. Casey? Yeah, Casey, Casey, yeah. Casey, right? So we follow Casey, and I actually really like Casey, right? And I think a big yeah. thing this book has going for it is that she doesn't seem to know what any of this stuff is either, and her learning stuff as she goes will be our introduction. We'll learn along with yeah, it. and yeah. I think that'll help out a lot. Still though, her reaction to this new random woman who shows up at her door, singing happy birthday and exploding her roommate. And then accepting her as her new roommate. <laughs> um, I think she might be just in shock at that point. To possibly, be honest, possibly. Where she's not entirely sure what on earth's going on. But she's going to help her rebuild the robot man that they exploded in front of her, or get hit by the truck in front of her. Uh, and that's kind of where we are with them. We also get a scene of this like evil boardroom of people who all look at Tron. Uh, and they're going to... Uh, except for the two melting guys. Except for the two melting guys. Yeah. And they're going to... 
they're going to start a burger, a new burger chain based on this meat that they can keep growing out of this organic meat life form thing that they're going to force into producing meat for them. I really like that little like team slogan. Yeah. Now, uh, what you guys probably aren't going to realize um, is there's a character from uh, Morrison's run called Danny the Street. Which was kind of like this street that yeah, could appear. Street. Yeah. yeah, and you could like appear anywhere and, and like transport them and stuff. So I, I think they mentioned like that they're making, uh, they mentioned Danny somewhere there. And I feel like that's where they're going to get the meat from is they're basically going to be harvesting Danny. That's what I, I kind of feel like. Um, which, again, if you have no idea, like what Danny yeah, let's the see, I feel, Street I, is, I, 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 this is a problem with like bringing in your past knowledge of Doom Patrol. Is it? It kind yeah. of like it's, you're, you're saying that's even, why but, Young Animal is Young Animal, and this is not yeah. a rebirth thing. Yeah, no, but it's still because an issue. It's gonna one. have to base off that. I know that, but. But what I'm saying though is I don't feel like there's much point in us talking about all these characters you know from the previous thing because this is this is clearly no, no, no. meant to be a new issue. Okay, one. but I'm I'm giving you context for stuff that you're not going to understand. Uh, I don't they're think called, this is the thing. They're called Danny Burgers. Uh, That's uh, where yeah. it's yeah. from. Yeah. 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 yeah, but the thing is, though, is I feel like like Matt was throwing names at me as well about characters he knows from, and I'm like, all you're doing is confusing me more. Like, but that's and that's my main problem with this is it feels like okay, so I used to hate on Doctor Who a lot, right? Because <laughs> I didn't understand it. And then I watched some issues or issues. I watched some episodes and I'm like, okay, it's fine. But there were certain arcs where I had no clue what was going on. Yeah. And I feel like that's what happened here. Like this could be a lot of fun, but this whole introduction stuff, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know how anything is going to meet up with anything there's else. A, this, oh, and there's a small scenes we've not talked about yet. There's a random guy in like a park playing like piano or keyboards yeah that's yeah. dr calder i'd which, explain, which, it, which, I'd <laughs> explain who it is calder. peter but you seem to get mad when i bring in my <laughs> yeah. knowledge from the previous but, but series, it says so. that it says that on the thing it says dr niles calder and then he just plays okay. a synthesizer and that's where we get a half a page or a page of and this is the type of stuff that i, I hate that gets like oh my god that was so avant-garde well was it really, or was it a dude like wasting space playing at the right. Tim, explain who Niles Calder is then. He's basically like the leader of the Doom Patrol. He's like the Professor X character, right. if you will. Uh, he's kind of like this very brainy scientist who kind of like uh, he he's built really Robot dick. Man, and yeah, he he's right, a so he dick, built Robot uh, Man. Okay, right. Yeah, and he so kind of like brings the team together. This is more giving me context now. I think before you gave me, you told me some things, and you didn't <laughs> well, tell me who that was just... in this book. Like, I, I didn't know yeah, who we're well, talking about. It was just, like, a random yeah. person that well, I didn't even know. I say, Danny the Living Street, too, is, is hard to give context to. This Here's is going to be... for me, though. Like, yes, this just throws it all out there, and I'm, like, pure and have not really any context for this. But I was okay with it, because, like I said, I, I really like Casey, and you attach onto her. Oh, yeah. No, I enjoyed this book it. as well. I actually really like this book. Um, I, I'm just uh, jumping in here because, like... Matt keeps trying to like explain things or getting Timmy to explain things to him. Like he's really trying to like make sense of it, and I feel like there's almost I... no point at this stage because we clearly yeah, I agree. we don't really understand. See, I hate that. I hate that you're gonna charge me four dollars and just go. Well, you have to wait. So here, pay. Well, then... Give me another twenty, and I'll give you everything else. And it's like, well, well how about you seed some stuff in a context way? Because there's stuff even that Casey says about her prom and that her like there's some weird dialogue about somebody flying through a star or something like we have I, think, I think just wanting to know more is what what could you come back you, you're interested yeah. enough in what you get and then it's like right you want to know more i think come back and you get i think more. everything with casey i really like and i like the introduction of the robot man the you know the calder guy playing the keyboard i thought was weird because there was just no <laughs> context for it It was just him playing a keyboard the scene Why with the guys robot man come out of a euro <laughs> well, hold on I'm, I'm getting to that in a second like <laughs> I'm getting to that in a second, right? But like the keyboard man was kind of out of context and stupid, right? Because it just it didn't connect to anything. Whereas the the boardroom meeting about the the meat burger thing, at least there was enough of that that I got what that scene in and of itself was. Whereas the keyboard guy it was just oh, it was a page of someone playing a keyboard, and I didn't get it. Yeah. You know, like whereas the scene with the, them talking about the meat burgers, they set up something. They set up we're going to do this thing, and I got that they were kind of shady. That what they're doing is wrong. Like there was enough mm-hmm. there that I understood that. 
Now, yeah, what I wanted to get to, the last thing I wanted to get to, was the fact that the, the burrito, <laughs> right? There's a hidden universe in the burrito. This was the thing where oh, this dear. got really trippy. Because he <laughs> threw the burrito, the, her, like, Casey's a co-worker, the, the, the other ambulance guy, the paramedic, throws it in the, the, the trash, and we go into the burrito, and there's this <laughs> universe, and it sets off an explosion, and then it cuts back to them in the real world, and the, the trash explodes. <laughs> I didn't get that part so much. No, and I get what he was saying about how the hero comes together and, like, that's how the universe, like, there's all these pieces that make the bigger thing. But then but you then literally put a pocket it. universe in there and had Robot Man come flying out of it. I think I think the problem is, is Matt's just getting too angry talking about this. What, what I figured is that he was probably on some type of mission and um, that <laughs> he basically, like, killed the universe and then came out of it or something uh but yeah i mean it, it's super weird but again like what i know. like though is there was a link to this stuff and calder with the fly because obviously we see the yeah, fly go yeah, on fly. to it yeah. and then their speech bubble is just the fly but then when he's playing the synthesizer there's just the fly again <laughs> yeah i wasn't really sure what that meant but i did notice the fly like popping up yeah throughout. So did I, and i a I... No, this is why oh, I don't yeah. watch David Lynch, because this is what happens when I watch David Lynch, and I want to start <laughs> yeah. throwing stuff, because... But see, Matt, like, this, just make, wa- this makes me frustrated yeah. at you, though, because anything you don't, like, get conventionally sort of told... Like, well, it's not it... even conventionally, because I can I can watch, like, a, a Kubrick movie, and it's fine, but once you start going too far the other direction, I get angry, because I feel like now you're wasting my time. And it's like, that's cool, I'm glad it exists, but, like, I felt like I wasted, A, four dollars buying this book... See, I and d- then I wasted the 20 minutes reading it. See, I disagree. So, I think you can tell. I think you can tell a few pages in, or if it's a movie like David Lynch, you can tell a few scenes in that you can tell enough to trust the people telling the story that there's going to be a greater meaning to this. Whether or not it's going to be yeah. completely oh, spelled sure out is, at some point. I'm not or sticking what- out. And- see, look, you're, you're getting angry and you're interrupting. Like, see, this is where you know he's getting right. agitated. He's getting really yeah. agitated talking about this. Well, yeah. I'm going to continue reading this book because I'm intrigued. And I enjoyed also, it. Uh, also, if I can say, uh, well, let, let me ask you guys too: is, is have you guys read anything else by Gerard Way? I mean, uh, I, most notably, no, probably the Umbrella Academy. No, I don't think uh, so. No. Just listening See, to I, my chemical romance count. Uh, kind of, yeah. I mean, you can well, then, yes. that, but, and I yeah. don't like, and I don't like it that much. Me either. Me either. I, either I, I, I like my chemical. I'm a, I'm a fan of theirs. Well, uh, I, I like but, Three Cheers. But past yeah. that, I kind of I jump out because then it becomes an art project, and I'm kind of like, uh, they're not my favorite band, but they're good. But uh, yeah. I uh, I really like Umbrella Academy, but but I feel like it was kind of set up in a uh, similar way where, um, Hold you on. know, it tells. Can I just jump in and ask what the hell Gerard Way has to do with my Chemical Romance? He's the so main guy. And news to me. How did yeah. you not know this? Because I hate Morrison my Chemical Romance. Why would I know that? <laughs> Yeah, well, and that's should, the thing is... If you're going to hate something, you should at least understand it. <laughs> it just looks like an emo. That's not true, because I don't like modern pop music, and I'm not going to take time to, to yeah. find out I, why. I, I think I mean, if you understand something, you should know why you hate it. Well, and I get why. Anyways. <laughs> but what, uh, basically I just, what I was saying, though, uh, I really enjoy Umbrella Academy. I feel like it's uh, pretty similar, and it, it also is kind of structured similarly, where, yes, the first issue is weird. It, it does drop you in this uh, crazy universe, but by the end, you know, he did tell a, a complete story that made sense, and uh, I, I have faith that that's probably what's going to happen here, and it is probably going to be very weird, and there will probably well, be, like, you know, uh, weird aside stuff, but well, again, uh, you know... Doom Patrol, that's kind of their thing. It is going to be kind of weird. Um, maybe there will be not, maybe not everything will make like total sense, but that's kind of the ride that you're going in. Um, if, if you read this issue and you don't like it, then I probably wouldn't recommend sticking with it. But um, if you do like it, then uh, I would highly recommend checking out uh, Morrison's run because it's really fantastic. I wonder if a, if a universe is born and died every time I hiccup. <laughs> Probably <laughs> that, that that got existential very quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sticking with. I'm at least reading this year too. I, I was yeah, intrigued enough, and I liked I liked and the main girl. I liked the overall oh. tone of the book was very unique, yeah. and I liked that. So I am down for it. And um, real quick, I'd say I enjoyed the art too. I, I thought it had like a fun. Uh, oh, I liked art it. Yeah. Style. Now, the art 
Yeah. Art I can get behind. The art looks yeah. great. I just wish I could make sense of it, the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that was good. Uh, had a very good muted color palette as well. Yeah. Which I thought was cool. Um, no, no, I like Doom Patrol issue one. Um, I didn't read the because uh, there was like a preview for a uh, shade. Sh- yeah, the shade book. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, I, I haven't that, read it. I'm kind of interesting in the uh, in that just because um, I have never been a big fan of shade. I tried reading the. Vertigo series before it. I, I, I didn't even know it, it was that a, much. I didn't even know it was a pre-established thing. Oh yeah, Sh- but it was Shade yeah. the Changing Man. Yeah, it was Shade oh, the Changing okay. Man. Uh, well, and I only Peter know Hooligan. this. Yeah, I only know this from Blackest Night. It was one of the titles yeah. that the dead titles right. that got brought yeah. back. And uh, well, and this is kind of my wheelhouse. Like I, I do like DC, but uh, like like eighties Vertigo is like my like mainstay. Like I love 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 that stuff. So like all these uh titles and stuff that are being brought back from that I'm really uh, intrigued in. Well, um, what I was going to say is I didn't read the back, well, not the backup, it's not, it's not a backup, but it was like, a, you know, preview. Well, like a preview. F- yeah, four yeah. or five page preview for it. Um, I didn't read it because I, I don't like reading previews. I like to read the full yeah. book as a whole. But I will I say... I didn't read it either, but yeah. <laughs> I will finish this goddamn sentence if it kills me, Tim. <laughs> you piece of hey, crap. I'm not interrupting this time. <laughs> No, you did too. He went into something, then you went into something, and then I failed to get back to my main point, and then he's interrupting me again. I'm going to kill him. I'm disagreeing with you. Yeah. But anyway, I thought the art for that looked atrocious. Um, really? I, yeah, it's just not my style. Like, I hate how it looks. It's like, I looked at that and goes, I, I'm convinced I'm going to hate that book right away just because of how it looks. I, it's, it's got that, um, I don't know, it's almost like someone who was eight drew it kind of feel to it. And I don't mean that as like an insult little, insult to the artist. I just mean... A little simplistic. It looks like a children's book kind of thing. I don't know. I, I just really didn't like how it looked. So I'm almost positive I'm going to hate that book just based how the art looks. But I don't really don't have that problem with it. I mean, again, yeah, I didn't I, read it. I just flicked through the art. It looks yeah. fine to me. I have to take a look at it again, but yeah, I didn't remember. Like, I guess it didn't stand out to me where I loved it, but I don't remember having any... Bad feelings. About I just it. don't like the style. It's just not for me. That's basically all, all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, not to end it in too much of a downer. Um, at least next time when we talk about Doom Patrol, Matt will just stay quiet for the uh, the five That's ten true. minutes, uh, and we can do it without the the angry man. All right. <laughs> okay. Any final thoughts gonna anyone re- has? I'm going to read it now just to ruin your fun time. Oh god. <laughs> you really don't want to put yourself through that, Matt. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. I'll just mute him. I'll just mute him for that portion of the, the show. It's fine. Um, You're really not gonna like Doom Patrol Day. <laughs> <laughs> that gets announced. Um, all right. So let's uh, let's do our favorites of the week. Let's first of all pick our panel of the week. Uh, mines is easy. It is Godspeed splash page. Uh, bright, bold, super menacing, like almost cheesy villain announcing himself. I'm all over it. Matt. What? <laughs> panel of the week. Favorite panel. Oh, I have to think. I got chopped in a Doom Patrol <laughs> hall, and I was thinking why I didn't Jesus like it Christ. so much. <laughs> so it was... Everyone um, just sat there really quietly waiting for Matt to respond. No, I just... <laughs> God damn it. Uh, All right. Oh, no, anyway, we'll panel back. of the week is probably... Oh. It's going to have to be from Detective... And it's, uh, I don't want to sell Pete's. It's probably the hug. Um, yeah, it's probably still... the reveal. Pete just <laughs> said not paying attention. No, I, I just, I just gave no. mine, Matt, and it wasn't that. So <laughs> okay, well then it was the hug between spoiler and also Batman. a good choice. Also a good choice because of the the emotions at play there. Sorry, that book messed me up, guys. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You guys got me thinking about it. Ugh. <laughs> Oh, Ginger, you're up. Oh, well, I was going to say the one Matt said, but for the sake right. of having something different, I'll go with the, the page where all the gods appear to her in Wonder Woman. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Timmy! Uh, well, I'm, actually, I, I'm surprised no one else said this, but, um, I mean, it's got to be a uh, detective, and it's got to be just, uh, you know, Tim Drake's last stand, just, you know, seeing him... Uh, gun down just that like you know it, i guess it's weird to say like oh it's my favorite when he died but yeah well, or, but it was a powerful image you know 
Yeah, that's why that's I a... didn't say that because I don't want to look like a nut job going. I love watching it. <laughs> so I get torn apart by bullets, but uh, I went with the relief over. Yeah. Uh, right. Yo, Pete. So what was yours again? It was the, uh, the, <laughs> the Godspeed splash the page. Uh, Matt, Godspeed. Okay. Being all that's medicine. A good one. And, yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm glad. It's it's so weird. That was like. Uh, like he can fake reading a comic book, but he can't fake listening for the last 20 seconds. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh. <sighs> Dear, okay. Doom Patrol just about broke us in half, so hopefully next week uh, we're I think back I think on... I know Matt's least favourite book of the week. Uh, <laughs> it yeah. probably was. Um, yeah, so we're going to do top fives and least favourite of the week um, of the books. So, um, would anyone like to jump in first? I'll take that. I'll go first. No way, they go first. I'll take that first because we all know my least. But no, nah, number one's going to be Detective, followed by um, let's go Wonder Woman, and then Deathstroke, and then Flash, and we'll put Action at number five, and then we'll put Doom Patrol just because y'all just saw what it did to me. So <laughs> and there's proof to the pudding. Yeah. Okay, um, I think I'll jump in there and I will say Detective at number one. Mm-hmm. I will then put The Flash at number two. I will then put Wonder Woman at issue, uh, issue three at number three. And I will then go um, um, New Superman and then in fifth place, Superwoman. A lot of super in there. There's a lot of super in there, but you know. That's where it goes. Timmy, you go next. Uh, well, easily uh, Detective, number one for me. Um, Doom Patrol, second. Uh, trying to think of uh, what else did I read? I don't like Tim so much. He'd be somebody that I would hate. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, yeah, probably. What else did I read besides Action and Flash? What else did we talk about? <laughs> Jesus I know, it's been a long Christ. one. Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman, I didn't, I didn't you read. You didn't read that. You didn't read Wonder Woman. You, you, you yeah. did Wonder Woman, Flash, Batman. Detective, Action. All-Star oh, wait, Batman. Oh, wait, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it'd be Detective, Doom Patrol, probably All-Star Batman, actually. I, I do like that quite a bit. Then, uh, let's say, Flash, Action, and um, what, then the worst? And then the worst Yeah, Batman. what's the one that you... Uh, I mean, I hate to say it because I don't think it's bad, but I again, I didn't read a ton this week, but I'd probably have to put Superwoman at the worst, just yep. in terms of my favorite. But all right, um, and that leaves one. Bring on yeah. the ginge. Mine's actually very similar to Matt's. My top four, I think, is the same: Detective, Ooh. Wonder Woman, Deathstroke, Flash. Fives where I do different. I'll go with All Star Batman. Bottom, obviously, Red Hood. But if I if I do the usual level playing field, take out Connor's Corner stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Back on the Birds of Prey. Oof. Mm. Mm. Well, that makes sense. You said it was on your drop list. So, All right. And the best. Well, there you go. There's an epic length episode of Comments from the Multiverse. And that leaves just one thing for me to do, and that is to tell you what's coming next week. And we have two new books coming next week. We have Tr- Trinity Issue 1 coming. Uh, which is the start of the ongoing series. We also have the first of a mini series, and that is Raven issue one. So Ooh. look out for that. We also have the start of the Night of the Monster Men crossover, which will include <sighs> both Batman issue seven and Nightwing issue five. Do you know which one we're supposed to read first? Batman. Okay. Yeah. And then on top of that, of course, we have Aquaman issue 7, Cyborg issue 1, Green Arrow issue 7, Green Lanterns issue 7, Justice League issue 5, Superman issue 7, and then finally in Connor's corner is Harley, <laughs> sorry, Harley Quinn issue 4. But of course, Connor still has issue 3 to talk about, so that'll uh, be thrown in there too. Uh, notably, a, a little bit smaller than uh, this week's epic load, which uh, was only made worse by Green Lanterns getting delayed. Yeah. But... Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's what's coming next week, so hopefully you join us for that. And, uh, yeah, so I guess that leaves me to say thank you very much for watching and or listening. You can get us, of course, on mailed at, un- sorry, at mailed underscore fuzz. It's been a long show, guys. I'm I'm losing my uh, <laughs> line of thought here. Um, 
And uh, yeah, like and subscribe. Let us know what you thought of the books and the comments and stuff and all that jazz. It helps us out a lot. Check out other stuff we do on the Mail Fuzz Network, on the YouTube channels. Mail Fuzz TV has all the almost cancelled TV reviews with me and Connor. All the superhero shows are coming back soon. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. comes back next week. And then the following two weeks later, uh, The Flash and Arrow and then Supergirl and uh, Legends of Tomorrow is all coming back. So if you want reviews of that, me and Connor do that on a weekly basis when they're airing. Uh, me and Tim do horror movie stuff over on Streams After Midnight on the Mailed Fuzz Movies channel. Me and Matt do regular movies on 1.21 gigawatts over on the Movies channel. And I think that's everything. Yes. <laughs> Aye. Thank you very much, guys, for watching and our listening. We always appreciate it. Keep reading comic books. And always remember, never get lost in the Speed Force. And long leave the Legion. Oh man.